Inspiring stories, head to today.com slash black voices. I'm Chanel Jones. Thank you. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Like, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my gosh, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started. Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although usually you're doing the cooking and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friends, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed them a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is, first, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. Every Saturday, okay. Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch, and I try to do it, but I end up, try, I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, it, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burnt. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave, it's a disaster. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with our bread. Okay. I'm gonna use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread, because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. You <laughs> choose what you would like. I'm gonna okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm gonna try whole wheat too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay? we'll see, I do both sides. This is the side that's gonna go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically wanna kinda smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did wanna do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not you know smothering it, but I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but hmm. okay. there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which I, shocked me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer on the counter. My grandma did that, my mom did that. And then it's nice and soft, exactly. you're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you, did I do enough? Okay, now we're gonna use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty gonna... thin slice, like yes. some of my so, white American that... cheese is thick. Right. So if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what? we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ooh. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay. So, eh, already, already screwed right. up. It's all right, it's all right. This is pretty, like, forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's, like, hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but okay. it's okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then, like, Pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> exactly. So and that's your lunch. Yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, what did we put on this? Nothing? No. No, no because no, no oil, no, no cooking the, spray. The butter is, is is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kinda wanna go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. After that, oh, by the way, we have some. Oh, what is this? Some, some spiked lemonade, if you if you would like oh. to cheers. Now we're to getting our closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children. Yes, but, um, exactly. <laughs> okay, so this is going on. Yes, we don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process, and we're really trying to get the bread nice and. That's funny because I, what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula oh. because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. 
This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and gets oh. nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid if I have for a pot? Not glass, I would use again like a metal bowl or a pot, you could use a pot. Okay. It's whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know, I know. Listen, I have I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um, I know, right, We're hot. gonna flip them now. See, I find that you hard. You need to use yeah. your fingers. Oh, is that okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. perfect. But now the now cheese is not melted. Down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our... right away goes the yep. burger dome. I'm going to get one of these. Right. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, like is, that? A, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. okay. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, look at the wow. meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks well, good. Sometimes it depends on the cheeses. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, look great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I like triangles, rectangles, rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know, it's very 70s. Mmm, mm. it's good mm -hmm. though. So good. Oh my mm. gosh. I'm a culinary genius now. We did it. Grilled cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're going to make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay? Sneaking in vegetables. Yep, is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We want to always season our oh, water yes. before. So you can generously season right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay, because you're um, a very generous person. Yes, but not with salt, <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like, I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes, so it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb that. I think that. I need more. Let's just do more. I mean, you can... It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger, yeah. just like pour some in. Ah, that just seems so excessive. Oh, gosh. I can't. Okay. How about right. that? Okay. Good, right. good, good, good. Okay, pour in. This is a pound of elbow a mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. Okay. You should be good. Okay. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the... Angel! Microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but 
You know what? I'm on know, a busy night? I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which mm -hmm. I'm going to take. That is cheddar, okay. eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to, I use the, yeah, the I big like side. I like the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right, that's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not gonna lie, my tricep hurts. I know, so then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, geez, this I, is like, your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. Put it down. Are you scaring you? <laughs> yes. Scaring you a little bit? I'm scaring myself, okay. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna break it up because again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will not. Oh, see, yeah, okay. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, what there, we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve 3 fourths cup of the cheese. Can okay. it live together? Yep. OK. OK, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come over yes. here. Oh, there's our cauliflower. So the cauliflower's I'm going to let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot. And why don't we drain the pasta? OK. All right. Let me guess, hot okay. pot. Ooh, it's heavy one too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water, rinse the pasta because that's gonna stop the cooking process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water, it'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. Okay, it's not gonna get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you wanna go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Ooh, I better just, bring it in case it's hot. Yeah, just Hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay, now we are going to cut that open and we're gonna pour it right into the blender. So that's All right, that. so now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One and we a have whole milk here. You can okay. use 2%, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's gonna add yeah. flavor. And right. it's helpful if the milk is at room temperature if Oh. It's not, you can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. Okay, then what? Okay, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. There you go. Wow. And we're gonna let it go just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can stop it and just we want to blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy because any chunks might, you know, sound off the children <laughs> alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. Okay, Ooh, that, that looks milky. That looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter All right. and we're just gonna butter our casserole dish. Just How am I over doing here. It? Okay. We're gonna, I mean, you can like use I would your just hands, go like take but the stick I just like and to, stick it around. Yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of like scoop it up with this and That's, get the sides Your way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you I know, don't so OCD. You really you are. Go. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. That's a little doesn't more. Seem you like can do more. Yeah. yeah. Like I like to. Yeah, get I in would there. get a good goop. I usually just take the stick. Perfect. Am I getting the sides? There's nothing too? wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides okay. and and bottom. This is where my Type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't. Want, I want every side done just yep. right. I don't want to mess it up. You know, I want to get in there. I want to get an A. A plus on buttering the casserole dish. Okay. okay. That's over. Now we're going to measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, be or mise en place. Absolutely. Wow. Or I'm mise en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay. The first thing we're going to do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that, I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know a, that one stick It's about is a half, half of a the stick. stick. Yeah. So it's like that. Perfect. And okay. just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right? It's really pretty. Seems like and it's having it a good time. it smells good. Yeah. This is what cooking should be. <laughs> You can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Frothy and then up. when add we the... add the milk, we're also going to do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. want to add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't because do that. we want to activate the flour and the starch. Does that look frothy we... to you? It's looking good. Yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like. To... I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just am like, let's get in there. Perfect. Now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're gonna add our milky okay, cauliflower I, mixture. But don't I wanna get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. Whew! <laughs> God, this is worse. Not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine <laughs> have I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably okay. did that this morning. Right? I know, I'm like, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this just little at a time Switch. thing? Like yeah, this, or can I just dump it Since you've already on? added, the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Wait, it's gonna this start is, to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now, is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of, the bubbles starting to yeah. form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly. Cook for one to two minutes until thickens. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another like way to tell is if like once you kind of lift it, you want to just see some of it. Some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah, it's like it a is, baby. You always have to be watching. It's about five minutes of of like babysitting. Yeah. All it right. It seems cooked. Yep. Yeah. So now let's add our cheese. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna dump it in. Yep. Yeah. And then just continue to stir. I want to have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm gonna get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part. Too. Yeah. This it looks pretty so yummy. So cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but and I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the nice. magic, magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it, or are you trusting me? I'm gonna trust you. I trust your palate. I think it needs a little salt. Some salt. Go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot though. Okay. That's pretty tasty. There you go. More I mean, there's salt in the cheese naturally, and so you know that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm gonna grab. Like, I don't want to over salt. The but pasta. I, don't I know. That's why you can always, you know, you can. Now what happens? Put some on. Now I'm gonna break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that it doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the add. pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat, so I think I need to okay, turn it you off. Okay, want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. And then it's off. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real that good. Up. We're gonna I would eat it, it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's gonna get so nice and baked and crispy on the top, and mm. because we're gonna add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, I'm gonna transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Do you feel good ready. about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I will it again, have a but sip I'm just gonna while trust. you transfer. Okay. I kind of like this. I'm not doing any work. <laughs> You are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got Ready? it? Yeah. Yep. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm gonna just eat some. Yeah. While you do that. I love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes. day, could I do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in the fridge, just make sure, you know, you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> Good job. All right. High five. Yay! Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. 
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. So the mac and cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers, Yum. chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right? And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first, why don't you grab the flour mm -hmm. and we're gonna add 3 fourths cup to this pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans mm -hmm. because it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with you know the ridged That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're gonna use three egg whites. Have you ever separated I have. I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg want, whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, do you let wanna... me try, okay, and you great. can grade me. And then, yeah, you can put the um, egg whites. Egg you white will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, egg yolk. There we go. Oh shoot. Okay. You got any extra eggs? <laughs> Just. And it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. Like, this it's isn't... not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah. That's perfect. But I'm going to give you a little tip. Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh, really? It'll it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the. Oh my gosh, that's so much right, better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're gonna use about a Is cup that the of panko. Yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it difference? Gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs tend to just be more fine. One cup. And okay. I like the crisp that panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, one, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One I'm cup just of sprinkling that. it around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of. Perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just laying just it on the pan. Just gonna lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. It. So it could be a plate, could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously, the word of the day. <laughs> Both sides? Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point other than like the Parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. That That's great. That looks great. I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like yes. liberal with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good? Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. And I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but it's always a little yeah. it's questionable exactly. whether they do. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake them. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So just dropping mm -hmm. it? How much? Just make sure just it gets a little just bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? And no? then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? And you can, okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. That's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is going to get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. 
This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I can smell the chicken. It's almost done. We're going to make a really quick special sauce. You can call it Savannah's special sauce. <laughs> so this is a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. We're going to add um, a fourth cup of ketchup. Okay. Any old ketchup? Yep. And I'll you can, like, you know, taste this if you like less ketchup, if you like more, mm -hmm. if you don't want ketchup. It's just kind of a fun. It's, it, it just looks like the sauces you get at, like, fast food restaurants. Through. This is uh, a, tablespoon? a tablespoon of mustard. You can use yellow. Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids, so yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up. Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can use that. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Till it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh. It is the stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm. into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Okay. And then, Done. perfect. That's good. Okay. Perfect. All right, now, why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done, but what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. Looks it looks done. Okay, well, let's, let's, let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken? Because I think that that's done. Here, okay. Janita. Oh, you got it. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I'm ready to stare Stand obsessively. This there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh, here. Okay. And then you can just take the tongs and okay. throw mm -hmm. them on there. And then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. They look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, it got that little golden top. Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and... I love the crusty edges. A little over oil. Ooh. Okay. All right, you grab and that. I still haven't learned this technique I will well. grab... That was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this. And we can eat. Yum. Okay, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. Okay. So be careful. Can That's serve, hot. Serve you up some. Yes, please. Look at how oh you see. It's good. And look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm gonna see if I can taste a okay. cauliflower. Yep, flour. that's the real test. Well, the real test will will come. Will come. Let's see. Just a little. I'm just gonna use my hands to take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. Now this is all yours now. You get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Smells good. Bon appetit. Cheers, bon Cheers. appetit. Cheers, okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower. Me too. First. I just wanna see. So hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. gonna get into this chicken. Should I dip Even it the um, way my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is no it right. Tastes good. There's no right and mm. wrong when it comes to kid food. <laughs> you are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have. Picky eaters combined. 
Yes. And so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good. And now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. All right. An I think excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> to you, too. <laughs>for joining us for Consumer Confidential. I'm Vicki Wynn. The headlines can be troubling. A recent spike in violence across the country. In New York City alone, NYPD's recent data shows crime is up 38% overall this year. Shootings have risen 32%. Transit crime, that's up 70%. And car thefts, those have jumped a staggering 93%. Several other cities also reporting a major spike in carjackings, including Minneapolis, where it's up 63% and 85% in Philadelphia. Now these numbers can shatter our sense of security. That's why for the next 25 minutes, we're focusing on personal safety and protection. Learn simple ways to protect your property without spending a lot of money. As we start planning spring and summer vacations, what can you do to make sure thieves don't know you're gone? Plus, what to look for when you're shopping for one of those popular doorbell cameras and some basic self-defense techniques so you can escape an attacker. But first, how to navigate potentially dangerous encounters during everyday activities, from commuting to shopping. A spate of recent violent crimes caught on tape. In Philadelphia, this man pulls a woman out of her car and takes off, leading to a wild chase that ends on foot, where police finally arrest him. In Chicago, two men approach a woman and push her up against a wall. Police say they stole her belongings and ran off. In San Jose, California police say this man breaks the window, snatches a purse from a woman sitting inside, and takes off in a getaway car. FBI data shows assaults and vehicle theft have increased from 2014 to 2020. So how can you protect yourself in some everyday scenarios? I enlist the help of former NYPD detective Mike Sapriconi, who is now the president of Squad Security. So here we are in a shopping center. What do we need to be aware of? You want to be at a place close to the location you're going. And park next to a lamppost, especially during the winter when it gets dark earlier. So, Mike, I feel like a common time that you're vulnerable is when you're just getting back from the store, you're distracted, you're putting things in your car. What do we need to know here? Pay attention. Look at your surroundings. Put the things in your car as quickly as possible. Check around. Make sure there's nobody else watching you or observing you. What if someone comes up and they want my purse? Give it to them. Your no purse. fighting. Don't fight. Never fight. Give him your purse. Let him take your purse. What should I do when it comes to my car keys? I would put them in my pocket along with your phone on your person okay. rather than put them in the purse because if they snatch your purse, at least you still have a way to get out of here with your car. Cities across the country have reported spikes in violent carjackings. Watch this incident in broad daylight in the middle of New York City. Carjackings last year up 55% in New York, 63% in Minneapolis, and 85% in Philadelphia. It might sound counterintuitive, but some experts say part of the reason carjackings are increasing has to do with the fact that cars are more secure now than ever before. You've probably seen it in the movies. Thieves starting a car like this. Oh my God, you know the hot wire car? But nowadays, new cars rely on key fobs, and that makes it a lot harder for thieves to get away unless they have this. Remember to keep your car doors locked, even while driving. Mike says make sure your windows are up high enough that someone can't reach in. Mike, let's say I'm stopped and some people come up and they try to carjack me. What do I need to know? Always give them the car. Unless you have your children in the back seat or something, give them the car. It's not worth it. Mike, it's cold out. A lot of people like to warm up the car before they get in or they leave it running because they're going to go in the store real quick. What say you? No, definitely not. No, no value to doing that. It's an opportunity. When the thieves see the smoke coming, that's like a smoke alarm coming to them and saying, hey, there's a call. Let's take it. As for public transit, Mike says stay vigilant. He investigated many crimes where thieves targeted distracted riders. He says the risk starts when you enter. Be careful on the stairs, an easy place for pickpockets to snatch your valuables from behind. Vicki, I just got your phone. Your bag was wide open, you weren't paying attention, and it was so easy for me to just grab your phone out of your bag. So what should I do? Pay attention, move your bag to the front, okay. lock your bag, and be aware of somebody walking behind you on the steps. Mike, what about this? A lot of times people are commuting, they put earbuds in. Bad idea. It, it just takes away one of your senses. You should never have something that can't let you hear everything that's going around you. 
avoid the temptation to stand near the track and pay attention to anyone coming into your personal space. You know, people have a tendency, they want to see when the train's coming, they get close to the edge. What do you say about that? Step aside, always step back. Stay six feet off the, the yellow. The yellow's there for a reason. When it's time to board, try to ride in the car with the conductor. In New York City, they always pull up to these zebra stripes. All right, Mike, so we get on the train. Where's the safest place to sit? I would always think the middle is the safest place, not by a door. Because okay. if you sit by a door, somebody can be lingering or they're watching you as the door's open, you can snatch your bag. What if the train's crowded, there's no seats? Hold the pole, get by a pole okay. in the middle of the train, mm -hmm. and put your purse between your body and the pole. Oh, okay. Some good reminders to help you stay alert and safe. Our thanks to Mike for that. And a bonus tip, if you are riding public transit in most cities, sit in the front car. That is often where the train operator is located. And when you're parking at a mall, look for that security booth in the parking lot. Try to find a spot near the guard shack. Coming up, it was made to keep track of your belongings, from keys to purses. But some have reported Apple's popular air tags have been used for stalking. What you need to know. And later, simple things you can do to beef up security at home without breaking the bank. Consumer Confidential, coming right back. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. A warning now about popular tracking devices from Apple. They're called AirTags, and they track the locations of common items like your keys and your wallets. But people across the country have reported being stalked by strangers. We took one out to see how it can happen. I was at the bar alone. Model Brooke Snader was at a crowded bar in Manhattan when she says someone dropped an Apple AirTag into her coat pocket. The device, roughly the size of a quarter, links to a cell phone through the Find My app designed to help you track your things. But now it's being linked to concerns about safety and privacy. When I was almost home, I got this notification on my home screen pop up saying that I was being tracked and I had been for a while now. Um, which is basically when I knew something wasn't right. Nader estimates the AirTag was in her pocket for five hours. The device's owner able to track her every move before she got that alert. I also didn't know what an AirTag was or anything like that. So I was definitely worried and concerned. And Nader isn't alone. OK, so I think I'm being tracked. In. On social media, others reporting finding random AirTags. I was being informed that there has been an air tag that has been following me. Tucked in, tucked in right here. Law enforcement agencies across the country are also warning these air tags can be used to track cars, allowing criminals to steal the vehicles once they're parked overnight. It's literally been like tracking her car. To show you how these air tags work, I'm teaming up with investigative producer Joe Enoch. Joe, what do you got? Vicky, I got my air tag. Okay. I'm going to put it in your purse. All right. We'll see what happens. Bye. Bye. I hit the streets of New York City with Joe watching me from his desk. First stop, got to warm up, get something to drink. Must be time for a coffee break. Able to see the exact stores I go in. Vicky is definitely doing some shopping at Sephora. Will it work in the subway? All right, here we go, underground. Anywhere there's a cell signal, Joe can see the AirTag in my bag moving with me. Vicky is really moving now, my guess. 
She's on the subway. Taxi ride. One last stop. Finally, time to head to lunch. Joe's not far behind, using his phone to track my location. It looks like it's just right up here on the right. The device leading him right to me. Whoa, <laughs> hey, you, you found, oh my gosh. Right there. There, wow, yep. you pinpointed me right to my table. Exactly. <laughs> All with this little guy here. It was easy. If you had slipped this in without telling me, I would have had no clue that you were following my every move. Scary. Yeah, that is pr pretty scary. I didn't receive a warning notification until I got home. It is now four hours after Joe put the tag in my purse and I just got the alert that there was an air tag somewhere near me. Apple says those alerts make it harder for air tags to go undetected. The company also updated the air tags to sound this alarm if they're away from their owners for 8 to 24 hours. In a statement, Apple says, we take customer safety very seriously and are committed to AirTag's privacy and security. AirTag is designed with a set of proactive features to discourage unwanted tracking, a first in the industry, that both inform users if an unknown AirTag might be with them and deter bad actors from using an AirTag for nefarious purposes. Now, this is important. Experts say if you get that alert or you find an air tag in your belongings, don't go home. That could reveal where you live. Instead, go immediately to your local police department or a public place and then call police and ask them to meet you. Apple told us they will work with law enforcement to help track down the actual owner of the air tag. Now, following our report, Apple did make some changes to its air tag. Joining us now to talk about that and much more is tech expert and Tom's Guide Global Editor in Chief, Mark Spoonauer. Mark, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. So let's start with these changes that Apple made. I don't think they anticipated that bad guys would use their air tags in this way, but we saw what can happen. So what are they doing about it? Yeah, in a way, they've made tracking almost too easy, right? Not just for items, but for people. So what they've promised is that they're going to be rolling out some changes later this year. I wish we actually had a timetable for those changes, but they're important and they're threefold. So first, the sound of the alerts will actually get louder. That's one of the complaints okay. that we had in our initial review is that yeah. it's just too faint, especially if it's underneath a couch. So what about a car? Right, right. exactly, you won't hear it. <laughs> exactly, so the, the second change is that it's going to be easier and faster the time element is really key yes. to get those alerts because it can't be hours that pass, it right. needs to be minutes. Uh -huh. And the last thing is precision finding. So the same feature that's available to you and I mm -hmm. using augmented reality and the live camera view so you'll get an exact location of where that air tag is using the camera and arrows that direct you directly to it. Wow, really interesting. Well, it's good to see that they are doing something, and I think that makes people feel a lot better. So what are some of the things that people can do to take advantage of other types of personal technology, like our phones, to help make us safer? Well, I think the number one thing is that if you're using your phone right now, turn off location services if you don't need it. And there are some apps that say, use it only while using the app. Right, or, like Google Maps. Right, or all the time in the background. And I would say, turn that off. Don't use that unless you absolutely need it. There are ways to share your location with family and friends and specialized apps for that, which is fine, okay. but I would turn that off. The other thing is, I would turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if you don't need it, because there mm. are other vectors for potential attacks that you don't want to activate. But the other important thing that people don't realize is that your phone itself can be an SOS beacon, mm -hmm. right? So look at the SOS features that are built into the iPhone and Samsung phones, for example. So you just press the side button and slide to activate it on the iPhone. On Samsung, you just press the power button a few times to activate it there. And don't just know how to activate the feature. Make sure that you fill out your emergency contacts on your iPhone or Samsung device to make sure that when that ping is sent out, it's not just going to law enforcement. As soon as you hang up with 911, your family members will also be notified. So set that up on your phone. Oh, that's really good. And turning off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth can help save your battery too. So that's good. Yes. Tip. <laughs> Let's talk about doorbells. What should people know before they invest in a doorbell camera? Well, number one is that the video quality is definitely getting better, but there's certain features that you need to look for when you're buying a video doorbell. One is look at the aspect ratio and how wide mm -hmm. the, the viewing angle is. Wider is better? Yeah, so wider is better, but also taller. Okay. So you want to be able to look at packages as they're delivered and other things that are there. And some people can try to duck down when oh. you're when you're using your doorbell camera. So look at, make sure you have an ultra wide viewing angle and also make sure that it's tall. The other thing is uh, make sure that you're signing up for the, the video storage online. Mm -hmm. And if you can, make sure that you have a battery backup as well as local storage if it's available to you as an option because you don't want to necessarily have to rely on, on the cloud. Got it. So you have two places, that video, that may be valuable in case a crime is committed 
to, to find it. Yeah, and the last thing is make sure that you're looking for package detection because these cameras are getting smarter. It used to be the case that if a leaf would blow by, <laughs> you would mm. get an alert. Right. But now they're that. smart enough to recognize pets, faces, and packages. So look for a doorbell that has all of these features built in. And quickly now, when it comes to security, what apps do you recommend? Um, I mean, there's a bunch out there that we like, but one that is really good is called Noonlight. And it's a personal safety app, and it's almost like a panic button on your phone. It's very light. Yes, okay. and it's very easy to use. So all you have to do is just press that button. It's almost like a security system on the go, right? Oh, wow. The authorities and police will be notified, and they'll go directly to your location, and your friends and family will be notified. Plus, there's this timeline feature built in so that, let's say you're going on a Tinder date, you can actually fill out that information, mm -hmm. and then your friends and family will be contacted, and they'll have that context in terms of where you were supposed to be versus where you are. Learn so much. Mark Spoonauer, thank you so much for coming in and sharing all your expertise. Really appreciate it. And up next, simple moves to help you escape an encounter with a would-be attacker. But first, when we come back, how to make your home less attractive to thieves even when you're on vacation. You're watching Consumer Confidential. In the city of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Listen to the thing about Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Now a closer look at home security across the country caught on camera, brazen crooks, smashing windows, knocking down doors, even impersonating police officers. These cases can make us feel vulnerable. With spring break right around the corner, you may be traveling or leaving your home unattended, but there are some easy ways to protect your space from thieves. From coast to coast, home security camera footage released by police captures burglars in action. In New York City, these crooks posed as police officers to get inside, overpower the homeowners, and walk off with $130,000 in cash and jewelry. In Phoenix, burglars deploy a battering ram to break in. In Los Angeles, a mother and her baby followed home and robbed in their driveway. And in Beverly Hills, 81-year-old philanthropist Jacqueline Avant, wife of famed music executive Clarence Avant, shot dead in her home. Police apprehended and later charged this suspect, who also attempted to break into another nearby home. Though national statistics show burglaries are in decline, these cases can shatter our sense of security. While it can be scary to think about these crimes, there are simple steps you can take to prevent the criminals from targeting you and your home. I enlist the help of Mike Zapraconi. He's a former NYPD detective with 16 years of experience. He's now the president of Squad Security, a global security firm. 
Mike, when it comes to these bad guys breaking in, what's the first thing we should know? Well, these are crimes of opportunities, so we want to make it as difficult as possible for them to come to your home and break in. What's the most common way criminals get into someone's home? Basic things, checking doors, checking windows. They're going to look for something that might be open, unlocked, like this. Uh. If it's locked, they're going to move on. Mike says breaking windows and doors can alert neighbors, and many criminals will move on if there isn't a convenient way in. Another common thing people do, they hide the key under the doormat or maybe nearby the front door. Anywhere in proximity of the door, they're going to check. Don't do it. If you have a security system, Mike says to occasionally call your company to make sure the software and equipment are up to date. No alarm system? He says a video doorbell can be a cheaper alternative. These days, many of us also rely on delivery services, so our packages can pile up. We all know about porch pirates, mm -hmm. but this is also a key that no one's home at all. The more things you leave out, more people are going to know you're not home. Got to get these inside quickly. Always, quick as possible. What if you have to go on vacation and you're going to leave your home empty? You want to make your home feel as secure as possible, so you want to always try to do as much as you can to make that person, the burglar, think someone's home. You want to maybe leave lights on? put some shades down. You want to be able to not have somebody be able to look into your window mm -hmm. and see that nobody's around. And if you park your car outside, keep your car doors locked because if you have an automatic garage door opener programmed inside, it'll work even if there are no keys. Mike says thieves sometimes strike right when you get home. So look around before getting out of your car. Be aware of your surroundings and avoid talking and texting on your phone. Let's say you come home and something's not right. The door is open, a window's open. What should you do? Step back for a minute. Call 911, get to a safe place, give them a description of what you saw. Don't go inside. So what happens, Mike, if you're inside and someone breaks in? Don't confront them. Step back, give them whatever they're asking for. It's usually property. You get a really good description, and then when the opportunity comes, call the police once you're safe. Mike, again, with those great tips. And don't forget about the items you leave outside around the house. A spade can be used to smash a window. A ladder can be used to get into your second floor. So clean up those tools. Also, if you are going away, ask a friend or a neighbor to pick up your mail. Or you can also request the post office to put it on hold while you're gone. Well, next up, we're going to be hanging out with two black belts. When we come back, learn some self-defense moves to help you get out of a potentially dangerous run-in. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. There are some simple things you can do if you ever find yourself in a dangerous encounter. We're all geared up. The key really here is to give yourself enough time to make a run for it. To help us with all of that, martial arts instructors Sharice King and Adam Ladd, thank you both for being here. You're a second degree black belt. Yes. Adam, you're a fifth degree black belt. Combined, you have more than 50 years of experience. Okay, so Sharice, let me start with you. Not all of us can have this kind of experience, but what if you are just a beginner and you want to stay safe and, and just some basic tips to keep yourself safe when you're out there? All right, some basic things you want to think about when you're outside is just being aware. Being aware is one of the things that you, if you just know your surroundings, 
you'll be you'll you kind of see things happening mm -hmm. right like when I'm on a train I'm always looking around somebody comes on I want to see who what, you have, what kind of bag you're holding if you look suspicious I'll leave the train I'll go to the next cart right, right. so just being aware uh, if you're on the train having your back against the wall not standing on the edge of the platform I see a lot of people that just kind of like like to wait on the edge I just don't understand it right? yeah I like to keep my back so I can you know no one's behind me right we're getting a lot of people lately getting pushed so yeah. those are some things that can really save your life or save you be aware of who's in your personal face the space don't have your head buried in a phone yeah. for example what about kids Adam you work with a lot of young students what do you teach them you have to make a scene if you if someone picks you up and takes you you got to say this is not my mom this is not my dad and and just be loud make a scene make sure people are looking at you mm -hmm. um, and then keep that contact with your parents right a lot of kids like to walk around with their head in their screens and they don't really they kind of lose that that touch with their parents and make, keeping that contact mm -hmm. keeps that form of awareness as well like like Sharice was saying is is being aware of your surroundings same thing take your head out of the phone take your head out of the iPad yeah and practice like that. that with your kids right practice yelling or breaking away absolutely okay we're gonna do some practicing too yes. Sharice Let's say someone does get a hold of you. What are some techniques for getting away? Um, so some basic techniques, uh, say someone grabs you, right? Mm -hmm. They grab you with, with one hand, yeah. right? You want to work against the thumb. All you got to do is just pull out the thumb. Pull really? Out. Okay, yeah, just no, pull out your no, thumb? No, oh. Pull your arm out. Go, oh, pull. pull out of the thumb. Look at that. Ah, I can't. So that's a weak point yeah. in your hand, the thumb. Yeah, that's oh, a weak point. Got it, okay. Right? Or if someone, say they grab you two hands. Right. Now you're like, okay, I can't pull out with right. just one. Grab your own fist. Grab, grab my own fist. Now pull out. Oh, Boom. okay, so right? you use my own body weight to help. Another thing, like someone grabs you, I grab you. That's easy. I don't want to. Right here. Yeah. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And all you do is just you grab, you pull away, and you pu and you pu pull your body back. You push away. So I push right? away off of you. So yeah. you grab my shirt. So I grab, push. And then I have to push away yeah. from you. Right. Okay. Grab me. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm just here. Uh huh. Push off. Okay. Got right? it. Pretty simple. Right? Yeah. I like that. The thumb is an easy one. Yeah, just you to just grab work out of there that or use your hand. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. So I know you have some simple moves too that we can practice aside from those getaways. Yes. But you know you're trying to buy time so you can get away. You're not trying to get into a big fight with this assailant, yeah. right? No. So show me some simple things that anyone can do. Okay. Okay, so a uh, couple basic striking tips. Um, you want to stick with with our, our super basic strikes. Uh -huh. Our super basic striking is not punching. It's actually not punching. A lot of people, when they try to punch somebody, will break their own hand. Because they're doing it the wrong yeah, way. They'll yeah. do it the wrong way. Even, I mean, even boxers break their own hand because they oh. punch so hard, right? It's, it's just the, the force, and, and maybe you're not holding your fist the right way. So we like to, to teach very, very basics at the start. So first would be the hammer strike. Hammer strike is very, very powerful. You're using, using the fat part of your hand right down by your pinky, and you just drive it like a hammer. Right, wow. she comes right down on top of the head, bang, that's where it is. Uh, next one is your palm strike, like the palm heel. You don't want to slap high five, mm -hmm. right? I want down here, and mm -hmm. you throw it just like a punch. We teach the punch and the palm strike that the only difference is your hands open and closed. So she comes right straight okay. and hits the palm and make sure we're, yep, hitting down here right by the wrist. Okay. Um, and then another one that we teach for, for our basic self-defense is the groin kick. Right. All right, we, we call it a point kick. Yeah. Um, just to, to get away from doing our traditional front kick. So when Sharice throws a point kick, there's no, there, there's tech beat behind it because you're pushing off right. of the foot. Pointing you your foot, yep. yeah. You point your foot, and you're not hitting with your foot. You want your shin. Oh, okay. You want you want the most leg possible okay. doing the damage, Got right? It. And the shin is the is a hard part of the leg, so that's your best best bet. Is okay, so not the shin. ballerina toe. You want to get close oh, and just yes. use yes. the shin. Yes, the okay. shin is the shin is where where it's at. So those are pretty simple things anyone can practice. You know, the heel strike. Mm -hmm. You said the hammer, right? The hammer, the hammer fist, hammer yep. fist down, mm -hmm. and then that just that the point, point kick, kick, but really going with the shin. Yep, three basic ones, nice and easy. If you're in tight quarters, the only the 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 one that we didn't talk about was the elbow strike. Oh, okay. The elbow strike, if you're in really, really tight quarters, right, bang. This is, wow. and you notice how she's... Yeah, okay, that's intense. Just, yes. Okay. <laughs> I tried to pull me in. Right. Uh, so, it, and it's, yeah, you, you just hit right sharp, and it's right a very, here. yeah, it's a sharp cut. And what are you aiming for? Should you be aiming for anything? Or With just... an elbow, you can hit wherever you want on the head, it's going to hurt. Okay. It's going to stun them. I mean, it, it is, it is... Uh, uh, a very very hard, hard part, of part of your body to hit with okay. all right but if you if if you have the ability to aim mm -hmm. you want to go for the nose right you want to go for the temple mm -hmm. go for the chin okay uh, if you if you're good enough you go for the the, the throat right hey, what right if you're there? small like I'm smaller than you what should I be doing because I maybe I can't get up there well for for smaller but it, it changes it mm -hmm. changes you can reach up with a hammer strike mm -hmm. if you need to and and you're you're Point of contact changes. So if I if Miss Reese goes low, she gets shorter. Go, go shorter. Now if she's striking up. Right. Now and it's not necessarily the front of the face, but if she throws a palm strike right here and lifts my chin up. Yeah. That's 
that's where the power is. And then more access to the throw the here. Throw, huh? Yep, okay. and then you're even closer to the groin. Right. So you have, you still have points of contact that you can make. You don't need to be face to face. And that gives her time to, to get away. Correct, this is one, one, a couple good shots and you're out of there. Okay, I think we have a little time. Did you want to demonstrate that throw? This is for sure. an advanced move, right? But yeah, this is, this is an advanced move. And, right, and she's wanna, just like You wanna do the hip throw, you wanna <laughs> do a, a double leg takedown. You do a hip toss. Hip toss? Hip toss, here we go. All right, so there's a lot of different ways to do the hip toss. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, what she's gonna do she grabs, she, she's going to gain control first. She steps in. Okay. When she steps in, now look, see how the hips are lined right, up? Right. She wants her hips just a little bit lower than mine, feet inside of mine. Okay. Right? The feet's got to be inside. This is her base. Now uh -huh. all she's got to do, don't throw me yet, just lift me up. So watch how she lifts me. It's with her legs. Right. It's just with the legs. Nice okay. and easy lift. Now when right. she wants to throw, she throws. There you go, over. Nice. Okay. And she keeps the control of the arm. Right. Okay, wow, okay, so that's not recommended for beginners, <laughs> but that's just something cool you can do if you're two, two black belts. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you. Adam Ladd, Cherise King, such a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for all of those techniques. Oops, thank you thank so you. much. Giving me a chance to get into a gi. Absolutely. That is our time for now. Thank you for hanging out with us, for all of us at NBC News. I'm Vicki Wynn. Join us next time for another edition of Consumer Confidential. In the meantime, practice some of these techniques and stay safe out there. First of all, I just want to comment that when you came rocking up here with your braids, I was in my head applauding because I remember the story. Yes. You were at AT&T. It was one of your first big jobs. You had braids. Like, what did they tell you? Yes. They told me that my braids and my red shoes were unprofessional. Oh. And, I mean, they meant it. And they were trying to help. I mean, that's the part that, that's the irony of it all. They're really trying to help me. And they said, you have to get rid of that. So I went home and my mom and my oldest sister, Cassandra, stayed up all night with me taking my braids out. Because you wanted to fit. Oh, I wanted to fit. You've been breaking the mold for most of your life. Yes. Uh, you've been someone who just makes your way through. But I want to go way, way back. Okay. Because I think we're all shaped from when we're little kids. Yes. And when you were a little kid, you were scared. Yes. I was scared. I was scared. Domestic violence uh, was part of our, uh, part of our family. Where did you put that part of your life when you were a little girl? Uh, you know, we hid it. I mean, people didn't know that my mom was a, you know, a victim of domestic violence. They didn't know my dad was doing the things he was doing. And so we just hid it, just like they hid it, mm -hmm. uh, until it just got to a point where my mom decided she wasn't going to deal with it anymore. As a little girl, how did you feel when you couldn't protect her? It was tough. And there were six of us. I mean, so we'd get in each other's rooms or, you know, we'd sit on the couch and we'd hear things. And it, it got to a point where my brother was uh, getting ready to graduate from high school and I was 15. It got to the point where we had to call the police uh, hmm. because it was graduation day and um, he just went crazy. And we called the police and they came and got us. My mom says we have to go to the graduation. So we still did that. And then we went to Cassandra's house and stayed the whole summer. And that was it. Did he think that you could ever become somebody? No, and that was the painful part. He told my youngest sister and I that summer that we would be hookers on the street without him. Mm. And that was so painful. I mean, it was so painful, but there were years where I would think about that every single day mm. that he actually said that. Mm. And that's when my youngest sister cried, I cried, and I don't know where it came from. I was 15 years old. And she said, is that true? I said, that's not true. Hmm. Because I guess I just dug into like everything my mom had taught us, that we are not going to be hookers on the street. I said, I'm going to be the president of something one day. Now, this optimism, this, you have, I know who's on your side. Yes. God's on your side. Yes. And your mom has placed that on your heart since you were a little girl. Yes. Math book in this hand, Bible in this hand. Yeah. So did you always feel protected somehow? that God was gonna watch out for you no yes. matter how bad things got. Yes, I always felt that. I mean, I always felt that. And my mom used to like take all six of us to church and we'd walk to church. And she'd walk us up Cutting Boulevard and then 23rd Street and she'd give us scriptures. The 23rd Psalm, she'd give us scriptures about protection. And so I just always felt that God was gonna protect me, but I always felt that other people huh. would protect me too. So I always felt like somebody was going to show up. So here you are, you told your sister, we're gonna be somebody, we're gonna go to college. We're yes. gonna, so you get into, where, where'd, you go to, where'd you go to college? The no 
number one public institution in the world. It is. The University of California at Berkeley. Yes, yes, yes. And not because it's such a great school, but because it was 15 minutes away from home. Yeah. So you were at Berkeley. You were the first black cheerleader. Yes. You were the first black member of a sorority. Uh, DG. Yes. Anchors uh -huh. away. <laughs> Anchors away. <laughs> Did you set out to be the first, or did you just do what you did? No, I just did what I did. And I think that happens a lot. Like, you don't know you're the first. I was a cheerleader in high school, so I said, okay, I'm gonna be a cheerleader in college. And I went out for the first time and did not make it, and said, well, that happened to me in high school too. And so I went out and I made it. And then, of course, uh, being in my sorority, I went through Rush, and I ended up being a DG. And I didn't know that I was going to, be, that I was the only black girl in the house. Yeah. Until I got there, yeah. as me and 110 of my white and Asian friends, it's like, <laughs> okay, great. And, you know, everybody feeling another afro and all that. It was a great experience, a great, but you don't know your first, you're just doing, right. I was just doing what I was supposed to. What do you see right now with Putin? And do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So AT&T, um, wait, were you married when you went to AT&T? No, no, no. I had this whole plan that I was going to graduate from college. You know, once I put my boyfriend on hold for four years, literally four years, once I put him on hold, then picked it back up, I said, okay, so I'll, I'll get married two years, I'm going to work for two years, then I'm going to have, you know, start a family. So I had it kind of all mapped out. I would have thought that you had all the tough stuff in your life early. But I would, if, if I were God, I would say, Sint does not deserve any more tough stuff right. after what she's been through. But life is funny like that. <laughs> yes, it is. It doesn't give you all the goodness later. The no. bad stuff still comes. You and your right. husband really did want to start a family, didn't we did. you? We did. And that was not to be early, was it? No. Four second trimester miscarriages. Mm in 10 years of trying to have kids, mm. four. We never could quite figure it out. And then when we got pregnant the fifth time, I said, okay, this is the fifth and final time. This is it. And we just thought there was either another miscarriage coming or a full-term pregnancy. Mm. We didn't know there was something in the middle mm. where we ended up having a premature daughter who lived for six months, so she defied the odds. They thought it would be two days. So special K, it was Carolyn with the K. My mom's name is Carolyn. Mm -hmm. So Carolyn with a K, Special K's uh, doctor at her funeral, he eulogized her and he said, Carolyn Marshall was here to teach us that we're not God. Mm. He said all the things we thought that would take her out and all that, they didn't. And you said she did have a purpose. There oh, was totally. obviously a clear purpose. But children, um, you wanted children, you and your husband. Yes. So you went down a beautiful road, uh, yes. the road of adoption. Yes. I mean, it's they're so just made for you, don't you think? Your kids were made for you. Yes, but I remember telling, it was after my fourth miscarriage, and I remember telling a colleague at work when he, he said, Sent, we have some friends who adopted, and maybe you should think about doing that. Because at this point, everybody's concerned. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm going through all these uh, surgeries and blood transfusions and near-death experiences, and so my friends really stepped in and family and said, maybe you guys should adopt. And I remember telling this guy, Tom Villa, I remember saying, Tom, are you nuts? And I can't even believe I told him this, so I'm gonna confess, yeah, right? Yeah. I can't believe I told him this. I said, there is no way you can love kids that somebody else had as if they were your own. Uh -huh. That is impossible. Yeah. I am going to have this kid. Yeah. Oh, I was, you know, I was still adamant. grieving. I was cutting grieving, up. Grieving, sure. I was cutting up on that staircase. I mean, I can still see it. 
And he just looked at me and he said, Sin, I'm telling you, our friends don't see a difference. I said, they do and they're just not telling you about it. Mm -hmm. So then later when we adopted our first, okay, and I sent out pictures, Christmas cards, and it was a picture with the judge and our new son, mm. Kenneth Anthony. And he's two years old, two and a half years old. And the caption said, you know, happy holidays, Anthony adopted us. And we're all just smiling. So my buddy Tom calls. So this is years later. He said, uh, tell me that again. He said, what's that? So he had a bad word. What's that? Mm, yeah. You told me. He said, uh, you can't love people's kids. I said, my boy, <laughs> just hang up my phone. Hang up my phone. Because obviously he was right and I was wrong. But you said that your oh. son adopted you. Yes. That's yes. what happened. And he adopted us. He stole our hearts from day wow. one. Little bitty something, literally suffering from failure to thrive, had been abandoned, neglected, born in a bathtub, abandoned when he was nine months old, mm. with his nine-year-old brother taking care of him for two months. Did um, your, your family grow over the years? Yes. And that was such a beautiful part of your life. But back to the business side. So. AT&T, and we talked about this, they tell yes. you to take your braids down. You do exactly what they say. Right. When you got promotions, did you expect them? Because I'm sure you got no. plenty. No, never, never. I never in my 36 years sought a promotion. Never. Really? I was just so, you know, I'm a kid from the projects. I was just so happy to have the job that I had and make the money I was making and things were great. And I got a chance to lead and touch people, which is what I'm all about. And so every job I ever had, I loved it. So you are, 40 years old, yes. and you get the call that any person working at a company for a long time would want. Uh, a huge promotion. Huge. 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 Officer. Yeah. So, except for there were a couple of strings attached. Uh, just a few. Yeah. Okay, so I walk in, and I'm, I walk in at home, and so I, the call came in in the evening, and so my husband's sitting there, so he's hearing this call, and my boss tells me that um, the board had just approved me being an officer of the business. And congratulations. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. And so she says, but a uh, few things. She says, I don't want you, you know, you're gonna have to tone it down a little bit. I don't want you to laugh so loud. I mean, you're a happy person. You're, you know, you laugh loud. I can hear it up the hallway. So you're gonna have to, you know, pull that back. And I'm like, mm, I'm not liking this call, right? And she says, and then uh, I want you to cut your hair. I left a magazine on your desk. And these people, they're black people, they're all in white, some event, and the lady has short hair, so I think you'd look good with that. Um, and then she said, uh, you can't be called Scent. Nobody really knows what that is, so it's Cynthia or Cindy. And at this point, I'm like, okay, this is getting kind of crazy. And then she said, and you cannot use the word blessed. I've heard you say that a few times. You just need to say lucky. Mm. And I said, you know what, I, I don't think I'm lucky. I'm blessed. And so now it sounds like you're trying to fundamentally change who I am. Mm -hmm. And then she said she didn't want all the people in my office. I had to get distant from the people. I'm like, this is going too far. And bottom line is, I, I turned down the job. Wait, you turned I, it down? Yes, I did. You turned down the money yes. and the job. I said, you know what? I need you to help me figure out how to say no, because I don't want to offend anybody. I mean, this is big, and I know it's big. I don't want to offend anybody, and I don't want to lose my job, right. okay? Because I'm not accepting this other job, so help me figure out how to say right. no. And she says, you're right. I don't think you fit the profile. And basically, she was saying she didn't think I was sophisticated enough. And so she says, I'll help you. So my husband's in the background. He's like, you can go to my barber. Okay, I got somebody that can cut your hair. You'll look good in white. Because he's hearing me with all this. I'm like, stop. Right. He's like, take the job. Take, take the, the job. job. Yeah. We can figure out this out later. I say, you know, when I first started, y'all made me take out, get rid of my red shoes and take down my braids. Like, wh when does this stop? <laughs> At some point, like, I have to be able to be me. And now you want to change my name? I've been sent my whole life. No, and so then I got a call from two, I got two calls from two bosses, her bosses, and they started off the call with scent, and they put <laughs> emphasis on it. And I said yes, and they both said they knew what had happened, and they wanted to start all over. And I'll never forget uh, someone telling me, he said, the person that we promoted to be an officer is the person who we want to walk in the door tomorrow. Mm. He says, and I've been to your office there in San Francisco, and I see your big sign that says, Lord, there's nothing that can happen today that you and I can't handle. I've seen this. And so he goes on to tell me about me mm -hmm. and what he loves about me. Mm. And that's the person Done. who they want to be an officer and who better show up to work tomorrow. And he apologized. That was so powerful. The words of a leader are powerful. Do you know how many women struggle with this, exactly what you're saying? Yes. Because we are always put in boxes with what to wear, yes. how to be, 
how to act. Exactly. And exactly. to be able to have a voice like you did. Right. It was beautiful. You were at one point, and this is such a beautiful image, you were ringing the bell on Wall Street. Oh. You were, you, at Wall Street, ringing the bell. And that image is powerful, but what's more mm. powerful is all your history came washing back. It did, it did. We were outside, so, you know, we had our event with the union that morning and all that. It was, I think, the 30-year anniversary of us on Wall Street, uh, AT&T. And I'm standing on the corner and I look up and I actually see it's Wall Street and another street. And I just started crying. Mm. And our CFO, John Stevens, is standing there and he goes, Sent, what's wrong? And I said, you know, my daddy told us that we were gonna be hookers on the street. And I told my mom, I'm gonna make money, my money on Wall Street. I'm on Wall Street. This is crazy. So he gives me his, his phone and I called my mom. Oh. And she just started crying. I said, guess where I am? I said, I'm on Wall Street, and guess what I'm doing today? And she just started crying. It's like, it happened. Oh my God. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. So you have this illustrious career at AT&T and all of a sudden you're retired. You're like, you know what? You worked hard. You I'm deserve chilling. you deserve to chill. <laughs> and then some guy named Mark Cuban from the Mavericks is like, what? I'm the, look, you need to help us. Right. And you're right. like, who are you, Mark? Who, who are you? <laughs> I mean, honestly, he was a, he he Mark and his chief of staff, they were blowing up my cell phone. So I handed my husband the phone and said, cuz I didn't look at it. And he came back and he said, um, this guy doesn't need any money, uh, you need to call him. It's Mark Cuban. And I said, who? I had to ask him, because I yeah. honestly, I didn't know Mark Cuban. And so he told me who it was, and I said, okay, I'll call him. And he goes, no, you need to have that call. You need to call him right now. Right now. Like, and then when I called him, it was beautiful. He wanted to know if he could see me that afternoon, wanted to know if I had been watching the news, that he was having a crisis, kind of explain what was going on with the Sports Illustrated article coming out and all that. And he was so genuinely disturbed. I mean, about what was going this on. This is an organization that was really troubled. I mean, troubled. it was smack dab in the middle of a misogynistic culture, yes. um, sexual abuse allegations, all of the worst of the worst. Right. I mean, you, you're being asked to come in there and clean up the house, basically. Right, right. How, how, how are you going to do that? And at first I'm thinking, I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Okay, and so I go and I talk to him. And so then once I talk to him, I just thought, hmm, I got to go home and pray about this. And that's what I told him. I said, I don't know if I'm going to do this. And two women stopped me on the way, two women stopped me on the way out of his office and said, are you the person who Mark Cuban said is going to come in and help us and save us? And I said, well, I don't have the power to save anybody, but I know who does. I said, I don't really know yet. And then they said, well, can we talk to you? And they talked to me and they told me their stories. 
and I spent time with those women standing right outside of Mark's office. And he wanted me to talk to him. He just kind of nodded, like, talk to them. I mean, whatever you can get, whatever you can hear. And so they were just telling me about the culture oh. and how women were being treated and a couple of things that had actually happened to them that they felt were inappropriate. Mm. And they said, we, we need help. You, you have yeah. to come in. The stuff in the article is true. I said, I, I told him I'm going to pray about it. And at this mm -hmm. point, I'm thinking, OK, mm -hmm. maybe I am uniquely qualified to help, mm -hmm. OK? And so they started telling me what they need. And oh, my goodness. So I went home and I prayed about it. I came back the next day. And, said, and I, was in the, I was in the office for three hours before Mark even knew I was in the building hmm. because I never made it to his office. People hmm. pulled me in a conference room and just started talking to me, wow. men and women, about the workplace. And it just wasn't all just misconduct, now, sexual harassment. Oh, it was a lot of other stuff, too, like... Yeah, just uh, performance yeah. issues, favoritism. I mean, yeah. just... But you had to go in one woman and change it. How did you go about it? I laid out a vision uh, from day one that said we would set the global standard in the NBA for diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. because I truly believe that that's where you start. And then I laid out a set of values, the spell crafts. Character, respect, authenticity, mm -hmm. fairness, teamwork, and safety, mm -hmm. both physical and emotional safety, and said these will not just be on the walls, but they would operate in the halls. Mm -hmm. Everything we will do, every decision we make, every hire we make, it will be based on this set of values. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what that looks like. And so I went through mm -hmm. each one of them, laid out a 100-day plan that had four parts to it, model zero tolerance, so meaning hotline, mm -hmm. investigation, Terminations, if mm -hmm. necessary, and, and there were some. Right. There were they were necessary. Uh, a, a Mavs women's agenda, so really an agenda to educate, elevate, and empower women, because that was missing. Yeah. Uh, and then just cultural transformation around diversity, equity, and inclusion, all that. And then operational effectiveness, just basic things like how you pay people, gender pay equity, all that. And it was about 200 initiatives. We laid it out and said, let's go. And so when the investigators report came out with the. Uh, the 13 things they wanted us mm -hmm. to do, and we had already done just about all of them. Uh, he had a press conference, uh, and he talked about those 13 things yeah, and the wow. expectations, and I believe that press conference was really sending a message mm -hmm. to all of the teams, to the entire league. Here is what we are about, and here's what we're not about. And it's slow, it's, it's slow progress. Slow. Yeah, it's how slow much progress. work is there to do? would you say? Oh, we're not done yet. Yeah. There's a lot of work to do. You have been at the helm of the Mavericks during a time in history that kids are going to be reading about for a long, long time. This is a social justice reckoning is happening. George Floyd, all these, these things are happening and you're kind of at the forefront. How has it been navigating these waters? It's been interesting because I, I call it a double pandemic. And what I told our team is that even when, when the NBA shut down, uh, I remember sitting in a conference room the next day after we sent our people home. Um, and I said, we don't know how long we're not going to be playing basketball but we're going to be playing the game of life with people. And so what does that look like? Who do we need to help? How do we step up? And I actually ended up coining a phrase called my new dot com because as a leader, different things were important to me now. Having compassion for people, communication had to be done very uh, differently. Community service was at an all time high. We have an opportunity to impact that compromise. Mm -hmm. And that really came out with the George mm -hmm. Floyd situation. And then, Compliance. It's like we have things that we have to do, like wash our hands, wear a mask, keep our distance early on, okay? And so those are the things we really start to focus on. And so as soon as we really start to focus on that, because we did a lot with the Mavericks for community service, I mean, a lot. We were out there everywhere trying to help essential workers, even essential workers that needed daycare, meals at the hospital. I mean, you name it, we were there. We did, yeah. Virtual, I mean, technology for kids, all that. And then here comes the George Floyd mm -hmm. murder. Mm. And we stepped up and we just decided, you know, my boss was having conversations with folks. I was having conversations, what we call true courageous conversations. Mm. And so we decided to have a big community conversation for Dallas. And we brought 200 community leaders together. Mm. And I said, I want people who represent the systems that undergird systemic racism in this country. Mm. And our theme was listen, learn, unite. Mm. And so we had a big conversation June 9th wow. of last year. It was beautiful. And we said, well, what are we going to unite around? Because we need to take action. Mm -hmm. And so we developed something called MAVS Take Action. And it's advocacy, communication, training, investment, outreach, yeah. and noise. And yeah. the investment is around community investment, economic investment, employment, 
uh, and just all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was 50 initiatives where we said we are going to have a minimum 10,000 volunteer hours and $5 million minimum right. that we're going to put into making sure that we promote social justice, mm -hmm. we eradicate these racial disparities that exist in all of these different systems right. across healthcare, education, sure. uh, economics, I mean, all that, right? And mm -hmm. we said we want to drive sustainable change. We want it to last. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing all kind of things around that. Uh, even in our arena, I mean, we've had, you know, situations where just very few people mm -hmm. didn't like the stand we were taking. They didn't yeah. like the fact that our players were playing on a court in the bubble that said Black Lives Matter and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing is I want to talk to all of these people. I say, anybody who leaves us, I want to talk to them. Mm. They can leave. I mean, we'll, we'll get other right. customers. Let's mm -hmm. listen to each other. Mm -hmm learn from each other. We probably have more in common than differences every now and then. Mm -hmm. You find that's not the case, but usually it's the case. Sure. And nine out of 10 times, the customer would not leave. Nine out of 10 times, they wouldn't leave. We need to talk mm. because we do have some real issues in this country. Yeah, and sure we have does. to respond to those real issues. And what I love about our team, what I love about the NBA is we have the platform. Yeah. We normally bring yep. people together. We bring people mm -hmm. together all the time. Our arena, we have 41, what I call 41 parties. Right, right, 19, right. 19,200 yeah. people at every party. Yeah, yeah. And so we bring them together. Right. And so people expect us right. to unify people. Right. So why not unify them around these critical issues? Right. So that's what we've been doing. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcast. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Press. Um, I look at you and I, it's hard to believe that you are a cancer survivor. I don't mm. know why I'm saying that, but because you are lit from inside and you don't have, um, you know, as a cancer survivor myself, sometimes yes. I think about it, sometimes I don't. How bad was it for you? It was bad. I mean, I thought I had months to live. It was bad. When the doctor says I got bad news, sit down. I mean, it's bad and significant. And then he tells me, that I have stage three colon cancer, one lymph node away from stage four. And so I went through brutal chemotherapy for six months. It was how brutal. old were you and how old were your kids? I was, uh, I got that call. I talked to him. I got my colonoscopy the day before my 51st birthday. So my last day of 50. So technically I was in compliance of get a colonoscopy mm -hmm, at 50. 50. And so, and the kids, my, my son was a freshman in college. Mm. Uh, Ricky was a little older. Uh, the girls were still in high school, middle school. So it was, how painful. Crazy. And so we had to tell them. My husband didn't want to tell them. Yeah. And I said, we have to tell them because I, I need these honeys. I need them to be my prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. And, and I, that's, what, that's what I told them. I said, I, I need you to, to, to be in here with us. And they all responded very, very differently. My daughter Shirley just said, I know you're going to die. I've seen the movie mm. Stepmom. Mm. You're going to die and you're not telling us. And oh, uh, it, was, it was just brutal. Yeah. It was brutal. In fact, one time Shirley told me, she goes, Mom, you're going to die. You're going to die. I said, why do you think that? She says, because you don't have your clothes on the door the night before, you don't put them on to go to work, and you don't come in at nighttime. She had a routine. It got to the point, Hoda, where I literally started hanging my clothes up on the door. I told my husband, I gotta go in the office just so Shirley can be okay. 
Mm. And so one time I went in the office, I stayed in there, I fell asleep, I came home late, I walked in, I was so sick. Shirley was on cloud nine. She said, mommy's gonna live, mommy's gonna oh live. I said, Shirley, why did you say that? She said, it's nighttime. You came home at nighttime and look what you have on, the clothes are on the door. You don't even realize okay, these kids are, you don't realize these kids are in a routine. They're in a routine. Right. And she needed her routine back. And so then I had to just try to get the strength even after mm -hmm a bad round of chemo, because I'd have nine bad days and five good days. Right. And usually what I try to do is go in the office and do everything in those right. five good days. But I said, I got to try to fake my way through some of these yeah. nine days, just yeah. for the kids. Just wow. for the kids. Um, you're so fascinating. <laughs> when is the movie coming out? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm writing a book about my cancer journey. I'm finally writing a book about it. When you look at all the things that you've overcome, what was the, which if you had to, like put them in order, what would be the most difficult thing you think you ha that, that you had to overcome in your life of all of these things? I would say letting go of what I thought was my plan, mm. that I had this plan of I was gonna have a family, what mm -hmm. it was gonna look like, all that, and having that be truly one of the first times in my life where it just didn't go according right, just like you thought. to my plan. Right. And I had to let it go and just realize that there was a plan operating bigger than my plan, mm -hmm. and I have proof that it all turned out. What is happening, everybody? Welcome to another fun-filled edition of Popstar Plus. Coming up today on the show, we are going to be showing you a revealing conversation with actor Josh Peck, who, of course, you might know him from Drake and Josh. Some serious stuff, but also a good hang with him. Later, we got our chat with Anne Hathaway on her new limited series called We Crash. But first, as usual, here's today's pop star. First up, Selena Gomez in pop star. The singer and actress is reviving an 80s classic for the small screen. She's currently working on a new series that's based on the classic John Hughes, 16 Candles. And here's the twist. The half hour comedy is going to be called 15 Candles. And it's set to follow a group of young Latinas approaching their quinceañeras. Oh. Gomez, no stranger to streaming. You might remember that she executive produced Netflix's hit series, 13 Reasons Why. She also stars in Hulu's Only Murders in the Building. No release date yet on the latest project, but it seems like a great idea. And it's set to stream on Peacock. Good. Lucky cool. us. Next up, Schitt's Creek. Now, I have not seen the show, so bear with me. <gasps> it's so good. I, I know, oh, I know, to. but I have four kids. Who remembers <laughs> Moira Rose's fruit wine commercial. Hi. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm Moira Rose. <laughs> and if you love fruit wine as much as I do, then you'll appreciate the craftsmanship and quality of a local vintner who brings the muskmelon goodness to his oak chardonnay. Well, good news for anybody who's dreamed of being a part of the Herb, Herbert Linger wine tasting. No. Next year, a fan cruise what? for the beloved sitcom is hitting the high seas. That's right. Setting oh, yeah. sail That's in March. Cute. The voyage is called Moira's Party Boy Boat. Ew, cruising. Ew. <laughs> okay, well, Brent, thank you. Well, bring together uh, diehard fans from all around the world for a weekend of costume contest, trivia, and dance parties. Unfortunately, no cast appearances are in the itinerary, oh, okay. but the boat's going to be <laughs> packed <laughs> with Johnny and David's. Okay. That makes sense, Johnny and David. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. guests are being encouraged yeah. to dress as their favorite character. This will be so. As Alexis would say, we love this journey. You read that well. That makes sense. You enjoy the show. This I know about rock and roll and smoking cigarettes. Keith Richards <laughs> is up next. The Rolling Stones rocker opening up. He kicked a 55-year-long habit in a recent interview. Richard's saying that he's what? given up smoking, and he did a couple years ago, and he doesn't miss it at all. Wow. Which is good. 78-year-old legendary musician also noting that he felt like he had, quote, 10 times more wind sure. uh, when he was rehearsing for the Stones' No Filter Tour. That started last August. Richards also says he's got a lot more air in the lungs oh. and in the voice, more stamina, living proof that it is never too late to kick a bad habit. Excellent. Yeah. All right, next up, Encanto. Have you heard Waiting on a Miracle from the soundtrack? <laughs> yeah. If you have kids, you probably have. In case you it. Here's a little bit of it. That's, I don't know where it is on the track listing right to uh, 
we don't talk about Bruno, but it's or Surface Pressure, but it's, right. it's up there. It's one of the big songs yeah. on it. Yeah. That's the actress Stephanie Beatrice, who plays Mirabelle, singing that. And when she went to record it, she was in labor. Wait, wow. <laughs> yeah, while in the recording, she told Variety magazine that she was having contractions oh during the studio session of recording that song. She didn't want to tell anybody in production because she didn't want them to freak out. <laughs> oh she told God. Variety, I was like, well, fingers crossed, I'll finish the song before the baby comes. Oh, my goodness. And she did, barely. barely uh, her daughter, Rosaline, was born the By very the way, next. I wow. saw her last night, and the Disney exec on stage. Yeah. No kidding? Was, they, they were accepting an award for Encanto, and they went on and on to thank her. For, for having oh yeah oh, right. like, really? that's we're wow. getting through yeah. this song. that's not an exaggeration yeah. wow. in labor water breaking wow. yeah finish the track can you wow. imagine wow no but, no hmm. can't imagine. <laughs> no yeah. and finally our special pop star guest dylan who's here with a sneak oh. peek of her upcoming <laughs> really? children's book head. it's called misty the cloud friends through rain oh, wow. or shine Wait, dylan what? we're so excited <laughs> about the next chapter <laughs> in the Misty the Cloud series. Yeah. What is what is little Misty up to this time? Well, it's time to introduce you to some of Misty's friends. Um, you know, and we kind of relate weather to feelings and things that kids are going through. Um, so, you know, we always talk about a mix of sun and clouds. Well, sometimes they don't mix all that well, and it takes some sharing of the sky, some compromise, oh, um, just like kids on the, on, like kids have to, have to go through and Claire and Tyler they're the humans in this in this series and they have to share a birthday because their birthdays aren't that far apart so they share a party so it, it's just a lot of fun it's compromise it's what happens when you do compromise beautiful things happen you know you mix some rain and some sun and what do you get you get a bomb cycle. Uh, uh, no. What's that thing you call? Bomb cycle. You get a rainbow. You get a rainbow. You get a rainbow. Rain 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 you get a rainbow. So, rain yes, much much more um, friendly Kid than friendly. a bomb cycle. Are these tales from your parenting? Um, maybe one day. Yeah. <laughs> it's more tales from like my meteorology brain because I'm like, you know, wow. how can we Teach. how can we work in a rainbow? Mm. And you know, in the back of the book, we like to do the science and there's yeah. experiments how you can make a rainbow at home. The so science cool. behind uh, how a rainbow forms, but it's also told in in the backdrop of this nice little. Story. My kids are huge fans of the oh, first Misty. You. We can't wait for the next one. I love you guys are all authors. It's got to be cool to read your own kid yeah. your book. Yeah. It's fun, especially when the kid likes the book yeah. 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 and they do, say it again. Do and they, again. Li they do like? Yes, okay. Ollie kind of has it. Memorizing. Misty the Cloud, <laughs> yeah. Friends yeah. Through Rain or Shine, hit shelf September 13th. By the way, it's available now for pre-order. And to find out more, go to today.com slash shop. Now a few extra headlines, because it is Popstar Plus. And we'll start with Coldplay. On Tuesday, the band released a new music video for their single, People of the Pride. And in it, the Grammy winners are dropped into a futuristic cartoon. Here's a sneak peek. All right, you can check out that song, People of the Pride, on Coldplay's latest album, Music of the Spheres. Finally, Dirks Bentley. Great vocals must run in the family for the country singer because in a recent performance at Houston Rodeo, Dirks brought up his 13-year-old daughter, Evie. They did a little onstage work, a duet of ZZ Top's Gimme All Your Lovin'. Take a look. Cute moment. Maybe next time they'll wear, they'll wear uh, the fake big beards for ZZ Top. Those are your pop star headlines. Coming up next, Josh Peck pulls the curtain back on growing up in the spotlight. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. Actor Josh Peck was only eight when his career started. He was performing at comedy clubs in New York City. Later, he found a home with Nickelodeon and the cast on All That and The Amanda Show before landing his starring role in the beloved Drake and Josh. Now, back in 2004, that's when that all started. He's got a new memoir out now, and he spoke to our own Joe Fryer about all the highs and lows in his life, including struggling with various addictions. The first thing we'll do is, um, title of your book is Happy People Are Annoying. <laughs> Why are happy people annoying? Oh man, I mean, just look at them. They don't obsessively check their phone. They, you know, they, they have the right amount of items in the 12 items or less line at the grocery store. No, they're just, you know, really, uh, you know, abiding by the social contract. Growing up, I just sort of just assumed that happiness or what I thought happiness was, was sort of reserved for an elite class, right? Like the quarterbacks and uh, the generationally wealthy and attractive people. And I assume that I just didn't receive the, the same manual to navigate life that everyone else got at birth. So in writing this book, it was sort of about coming to terms with that idea and what I had to face to find my own version of happiness and, and define it for myself. Let's talk about uh, just some of the things that are in the book, including growing up, uh, you were raised by a single mother and you describe your relationship as a scrappy startup. What does that mean? You know, the fact that I was an only child with a single mom, growing up where I would see people with, let's just call it a more traditional family setup, it seemed like the siblings were sort of the, the employees and then the parents were upper management sort of, you know, beckoning down orders from uh, their office. But the nature of my mom and I being just the two of us and that I don't think it's anything new that single parents having to sort of not only raise a kid on their own, but provide, you know, we certainly went through some financially uh, insecure periods. We were just constantly having to pivot and adapt. And I had this deep seated, you know, feeling of, of love and that I was a value because my mom was so there for me. And yet I think I was certainly exposed early on to the idea of like, you know, life, life's not exactly a, a piece of cake all the time. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm the son of a single parent. I was born during the Great Depression. My mother's. I mean, you were doing stand-up comedy when you were eight, right? Yes, it wasn't going to be Little League because my cardiovascular was just not up to par at that age. I was really in the fruit roll-up and gushers and I was I was heavy on the fruit snacks I'm not gonna lie Joe but um yeah I I found my first agent from backstage magazine when I was nine years old I don't know how it came into my possession and I went and interviewed with him and he said I, I get young stand-ups time at like legit clubs in New York stand-up New York Gotham Carolines if you can put an act together I'll get you up and uh, a week later I was performing at Caroline's Comedy Club. And, and from then on, I was sneaking into the back of most comedy clubs in New York so that they wouldn't lose their liquor license. I was about to say, does that seem right? <laughs> Probably not, but you know, much of my story doesn't seem right. You have this quote that I really like. It's the reason why people are funny is usually not funny. Talk more about that. Sure, I, I think that my comedy came as a defense mechanism for growing up overweight and I, I basically just felt real or imagined that I walk into most rooms at that age and at my weight at a disadvantage, that people made a snap judgment about me, that I was, you know, slothful or, or, or lacked willpower or something, and that it was incumbent on me to sort of not necessarily even stand out. I just wanted to be on the same level as everyone else. You were in all these shows, all that, the Amanda show, eventually Drake and Josh. You described it as kind of just a job, but talk more about what that experience was like. Well, it was an incredible job and it was the thing that I 
the kind of comedy and acting that I love doing. I mean, growing up, all that, which for anyone who doesn't know, was sort of like Saturday Night Live for kids, was the holy grail. It was my biggest, biggest dream. So to then get an offer to do the Amanda show and a year later to have my own show with Drake was was really special. And yet it was a kid show and there was no social media. And so it was certainly popular to the demographic that it was made for like eight to 12 year olds, but only in the last five years with social media and just how memeable it is. And the fact that kids television doesn't pay residuals. So they read a lot. <laughs> like I, um, I feel like it's become so much more a part of the lexicon because so many generations have now experienced it. But at that time I would do this really cool job. And then I'd go home and watch hockey with my best friend, Len at our, you know, two bedroom apartment complex. You mentioned the struggles you had with weight when you were young and then in front of really all of our eyes, we saw you lose, what, a hundred pounds or more? I mean, what did you make of the way the public responded to that weight loss, which everyone was seeing firsthand and talking about? It was, I, I imagine it must be odd for people to have watched this person that they sort of fell in love with, with this look and this size, and suddenly there's this massive sort of shift. So. When I did lose the weight, there was certainly a, a small contingent that thought, oh, you were you were funnier when you were fat or you took away this guy who we loved. And we're not so sure if we love this new guy. So that was very odd to navigate. And we'll have more with Josh coming up, including what he's learned from his past struggle with substance abuse. That's next. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. We're back now with more of Joe Fryer's very honest conversation with actor Josh Peck. With more than 2 million Twitter followers and in his new memoir, he reveals his past relationship with drugs, what happened there, and how he has since recovered. As a kid, it was food that maybe helped provide an escape for you. As you got older, it was substances, right? Yeah, I, I don't think it's sort of any surprise that after I lost 100 pounds and I imagined that I was at this finish line and that my life could begin, that I quickly realized that I was in the same head, but with a different body. And so I was also 18 and supremely stupid and looking to sow my wild oats and maybe make up for some lost time where I held my, myself back feeling insecure in my body. That when I sort of discovered drugs and alcohol, it... Uh, it quickly satisfied that itch 
that had presented itself when I lost weight, but didn't have the same medicine. And I say it was like I, I traded in my Prius for a Ferrari with no brakes. It, it just was so much more efficacious, but with less calories. And I proceeded for the next three or four years to really uh, kind of almost set my life on fire, um, just ruining relationships and putting myself in danger and, and inevitably just sort of breaking my mom's heart on a regular basis. So uh, it, it was quick, all things considered. You know, I, I, I was luckily able to get sober when I turned 21, but at the moment it felt like an eternity. What do you think also helped you get sober? Because obviously it's much, much easier said than done. For me, you know, I've, I've really benefited from 12 step. There's a lot of ways to get to recover, but um, that, that way worked for me and I still do it, you know, knock wood 14 years later. And it's just, you know, it's opened me up to a lot of uh, avenues of growth. Did falling in love help? Oh, certainly. Basically, my wife has helped me in all avenues of my life. She's great. She censors me in all the right ways. She's pretty outstanding. I'm, I'm very happy and incredibly lucky. And now we have a kid and we, we own a home together. So it's gonna be incredibly hard for her to leave me. It'll just be so much paperwork. Uh, being a dad, I mean, what does that mean for you? And how much do you think of the fact that it's so important to be a good father to your son, knowing that you grew up without having a father? I never met my dad and he passed away in my mid twenties. And having a child and especially a boy for someone like me feels like, um, this sort of cosmic comeuppance. Uh, it feels like the opportunity for me to write what's been a bad cycle that was sort of started by my dad and could have been perpetuated through me. And the truth is we don't always get the amends that we deserve from the people who've hurt us, but sometimes we give ourselves that amends by not passing that trauma onto the next generation. And so, in me, being for my son, the father that I always wanted, I feel like I'm sort of making that amends to myself. And I just love hanging out with him. It's great. Dare I ask, are you a happy person now? Yeah, I'm, you know what? I'm happy adjacent. <laughs> I, yes, absolutely. But also, as I talk about in the book, like, I'm less concerned with happy and I'm more into content and I'm, I'm more than content. And you're not annoying, right? Oh, I'm certainly annoying. Just ask Twitter. <laughs> well, we certainly hope people find some inspiration from Josh's story and appreciate him telling it to Joe Fryer. In his book, Happy People Are Annoying. That's a great title. It is available today. Still to come, we're going to turn to another talented actor. That is the lovely Anne Hathaway. And her new, she's going to tell us about her uh, gripping new limited series next. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Ali Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back in the new Apple TV Plus limited series called We Crashed. Anne Hathaway stars as the wife of WeWork co-founder Adam Newman. And she told us what it was like playing the real life woman who contributed to the rise and fall of one of the world's most valuable startups. Ask 
Oscar winner Anne Hathaway has been delighting audiences ever since her breakout success in The Princess Diaries. And more than 20 years, she is a force in Hollywood. Her latest project, uh, We Crashed, it's a new limited series on Apple TV Plus. It's inspired by actual events. It tells the story of the rise and seismic fall of the WeWork startup and the love story at the center of it all. Take a look. <laughs> it's just, it's off. Totally off. You know, you walk in and you just feel like claustrophobic. Absolutely. So I just want to go up, blow it out. Finally got something to breathe. First thing I thought when I walked in, hopefully not. That's what it needs. It needs just rise and grind, rise <laughs> and grind. <laughs> yes. Feel free to look around. I imagine you need measurements, etc. Yes, my love. I'll meet you in the car. Okay, you sure you're ready? Yes, yes, it's a right. My love, you're not wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and Hathaway, and good morning. Good morning. This, How wonderful to see it's, you. I have to say, I'm just so delighted that you're sitting here. You're I in know. person. We're together. We're together. We went real deep just during just the commercial Just 10 seconds break. before. We, we both started crying. We were having a little <laughs> moment. You know what? The pandemic, though, has taught a lot of lessons to all of us. Yeah. Um, you had a new baby during the pandemic. That was one of the I beautiful did. moments. But what? What did it teach you? What did you learn about yourself? Well, that's what we were talking about during yeah. the during the break was I was saying that, you know, how it's so significant to be back here with people. And I have to say that in moments like this, I really used to let my nerves get the best of me. I'm still a human being. Sometimes yeah. they creep up. But I just, during the pandemic, went, you can't give your life away anymore. No. You can't give your life away to that. You got to find a way through. You got to be okay with whoever you are in that moment because you moment. don't want to miss anymore. You that's know? it. We've learned that. and I know, hope so. And we're going to keep learning it. You know, it's not. I like your, <laughs> your vulnerability. I feel like you say what you feel. And I, I was watching an interview you did yesterday. And you one of the comments you said, it was you were having fun with the story. But you said, I'm not the most confident person. <laughs> no. And no. that struck me because mm -hmm. I think people would look at you and say, wow, she's won an Oscar. She's got a great family. She's got, you know, yeah. all those things. But confidence doesn't necessarily that does not equate often. No, 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 no. That doesn't necessarily show up in the DNA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's something I think you have to, I think it's something you have to learn. It's something you have to just figure out how to be at mm -hmm. peace with yourself. Because like I said, it's your life. Yeah, and you, yeah, you've got to live it on your terms. By the way, do you love being a mom of two? Oh, of course. Come on. Of course. What's the best it's part so of two? delicious. Yes, what is it? And my two-year-old right now, he says, delicious. Oh my God. <laughs> so, mm, mommy, do you, <laughs> do you have you like what has your family um how has it affected the way your professional life works i know mine changed completely oh my i yeah. mean i'm sure you understand this yeah. it's just logistics logistics yeah. logistics mm -hmm. how how are we doing what are we doing where is mm -hmm. who needs what and did yeah. we have a sandwich yeah <laughs> exactly snacks, snacks 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 and yeah. um and yeah but it's i mean for me it's just going back to what i was mm -hmm. talking about also I, I, it just there's so much joy. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they get, bring an innate purpose to everything. Yes. And um, I mean, I have I, I, I could go on about it, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it also leaves me a little speechless. Just I love that. And I feel and I just want to say I'm just feel really lucky. It's something I've always wanted. And I'm just so lucky that it happened to me. Um, let's talk about your, your project, which is fascinating. <laughs> you worked with Jared Leto, who, yes. by the way, you said did not, when you met him on the set and you shot for six months, the guy never broke character no. during the entire period? Not once. I've never seen anything like it. Wait, so like, what about when, did you ever have a meal with him and was he still that person? No, no, no he, you know, I just, I, I was fascinated by his process. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a really, and, and I have one that's really receptive mm -hmm. and I just, um, and I think that, especially in a story mm -hmm. like the one we're telling where we're playing two people wildly in love, yeah. we had to build a certain connection yeah. and culture between us. And so if that's what worked for him, then it worked for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever we needed to discuss practical things like you know, how a scene was going to work, um, I wouldn't call him Jared, I would call him Motek. And oh. he wouldn't call me Annie, he would call me Rivka. And so mm -hmm. we kind of had those pet names for each other that were our characters' mm -hmm. pet names. And we just... We just opened to each other. It was, re and then in between takes, we, there wasn't a lot of chit chat. 
but that we were always connected. Uh -huh. And um, it was it was such a beautiful experience, I have to say. Um, what, I was really inspired working with him. And what do you hope people take from this? Because this is a fascinating story. I only knew like the very small layer of it. Well, <clears throat> the thing that I, we were hoping to do with mm -hmm. the series was to show that these are human beings. Mm -hmm. And I want to make that very clear, is that there is no uh, judgment of these mm -hmm. people, and especially no judgment from me towards Rebecca. Um, I mm -hmm. recognize I'm a mm -hmm. human being and she is a human being. Mm -hmm. And for me, what a human being is, it's we're a mixture of admirable traits and we're, a and we're also, we gotta work on mm -hmm. ourselves. And there's things that we're always working on. And so, uh, you know, there's been a documentary, there's yeah. been books, there's been, yeah. we know the story. Yes. So this was an opportunity to look at how people, and everything I heard about Rebecca mm -hmm. was that she authentically meant everything mm -hmm. that she said. Mm -hmm. How, what happens when someone, I don't know, isn't quite able to practice what they preach mm -hmm. yet. Mm, that's yeah that's well put this is fascinating i think people are going to love it you are fantastic in it jared is too annie thank you so much for being with us Honey, oh, so good to see I know. you holding hands in person <laughs> we want everyone to know we crash premieres this friday on apple tv plus always great catching up with anne hathaway we appreciate her time thanks for watching another terrific pop star plus hope you enjoyed it tomorrow we've got uh, one of the stars of the new film cyrano have a great day we'll see you soon Today, all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> Well, hello, hello. Look at our friends. They're yes. watching us on Today All Day. I'm here with Craig, and you're watching our digital show, Today in 30. Yes, lots going on today. Uh, here's what's coming up for you. We're going to start with two important press in Ukraine. One from Washington, one from Kyiv, with Ukraine's president making an urgent plea for help during an address to the U.S. Congress. President Zelensky's message to lawmakers and the American people. That's coming up. And then we're going to switch gears, and we're going to celebrate a special milestone at the Smithsonian's National Zoo. 50 years of its giant panda. Half century of panda it, diplomacy. Yeah. Uh, and then <laughs> actor Scott Wolf joined us on the third hour to tell us all about his new movie. And then I got the latest scoop on all things Hollywood from our friend Justin Sylvester. That's all coming up on this episode of Today, Today in 30. 30. We start our coverage with NBC's Chief White House Correspondent Peter Alexander. Good morning, Peter. Hoda, good morning. President Zelensky greeted with a standing ovation from Congress before delivering that searing and pointed appeal for the U.S. to do more, invoking Pearl Harbor and 9-11, saying Ukraine has been experiencing similar attacks every night for the last three weeks. And mentioning Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, Zelensky saying, I have a need. With his country under siege, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky this morning using his megaphone once again, with Congress and the American people as his audience. The American people are helping not just Ukraine, but Europe and the world to keep the planet alive, to keep justice in history. And this is my main mission as the leader of my people, great Ukrainians. And as the leader of my niche, I am addressing the President Biden. You are the leader of the niche, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Zelensky appealing for more help from the United States. Is this a lot to ask for to create a no-fly zone, zone over Ukraine? Russia would not be able to terrorize our 
free cities. If this is too much to ask, we offer an alternative, aircraft that can help Ukraine, help Europe. President Biden opposes a no-fly zone, with the White House saying it would mean U.S. pilots shooting down Russian jets. Despite Zelensky's repeated appeals, the president has also opted against helping transfer Soviet-era fighter jets to Ukraine, saying that would spark World War III. But overnight, NBC News has learned the administration is considering providing Ukraine with these cutting-edge killer drones called switchblades that could target Russian tanks and artillery positions from miles away, according to two congressional officials briefed on the matter. Pressure on the president to do more is building. I find it despicable, unacceptable to deny the Ukrainian people the ability to control their own skies. With more than $1 billion already sent, President Biden just signed off on another nearly $14 billion of bipartisan-approved humanitarian and military aid. And in less than two hours today, President Biden will address the country, announcing another $800 million in military aid to restock Ukrainian forces, largely with anti-tank and surface-to-air missiles. And next week, for the first time since the war began, President Biden is going to travel to Brussels for what will be an extraordinary summit of NATO allies to reaffirm the U.S.'s support for its allies. Hoda? Thank you so much. And a programming note, NBC News will have live coverage of President Biden's remarks expected to begin in the next hour. Now to more on the situation on the ground in Ukraine, the capital city of Kyiv coming under new Russian attacks overnight, even as a even as a third straight day of peace talks plays out. NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel is in Kyiv for us once again. Good morning, Craig. It is extremely quiet here in the center of Kyiv right now because there is a full curfew in place. No one is out on the streets. All we can hear is the occasional explosion on the outskirts of the city as Russia is continuing its attacks this morning, hitting a 12-story building here in the capital. Life and death now in Ukraine can depend on the building you live in, which floor, and luck as Russian attacks grow more indiscriminate, firing seemingly at random into Kyiv and Kharkiv and Mariupol, where officials say Russian troops seized an intensive care hospital and are holding at least 400 people hostage. A regional leader saying that the Russians are using those inside the hospital as human shields and are firing from inside the hospital and barring anyone from leaving. NBC News has not been able to independently confirm the incident. Russia's violence against civilians is a main reason why President Zelensky has been asking for help to protect the sky. But yesterday, despite the risks, Zelensky received three NATO prime ministers from the Czech Republic, Slovenia and Poland on a rare trip to the capital under attack. With such friends, with such countries, neighbors and partners, we will be able truly to defeat I don't want to say who. We all know it, he said. U.S. officials assess the unmentionable President Vladimir Putin may escalate further while Russian troops still have the military advantage and say he appears to be locked in a propaganda bubble with yes-men telling the president what he wants to hear. While Russian TV feeds the country a controlled diet of battlefield victories in Ukraine and of Russian troops handing out food to Ukrainians happy to be liberated from what the Kremlin claims is a neo-Nazi government, although that's not true. Some Russians are daring to challenge the narrative. A producer rushed to the set of Russia's main newscast this week with a sign that said, no war and don't believe the propaganda. The journalist was detained and given a small fine, around $300. Uh, don't like um, uh, Russia start this uh, invasion and um, it's, it was really terrible. Other journalists are being silenced forever. Fox News announcing the death of cameraman Pierre Zizhevsky, a veteran of conflict zones killed in the same attack that seriously wounded correspondent Benjamin Hall. A Ukrainian producer and translator working with the team, Oleksandra Kushinova, was also killed. 
amid all the violence, which has not slowed down, there appears to be some progress in peace talks, with both Ukrainian and Russian officials expressing optimism, with President Zelensky saying that the Russian side is appearing to sound more realistic, and the Russian foreign minister saying that there does seem to be concrete progress in the negotiations. Our chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, on the ground. Richard, stay safe. Thank you. What do you see right now with Putin, and do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Carson joins us. We're celebrating a golden anniversary. 50 years ago, China gave us two pandas. Oh, those pandas having their breakfast with us this morning, <laughs> too. Uh, that gesture of goodwill inspired the giant panda program at the Smithsonian, and it also inspired a national obsession with those iconic animals. That's right. NBC senior national correspondent Carrie Sanders joins us from the Smithsonian's National Zoo down in Washington, D.C. Good morning, Carrie. No, good morning, guys. This is a remarkable achievement, 50 years in the making. So if it was for us, we might get some heavenly piece of chocolate cake, but a frozen piece of sugar cane, well, that's what they love. So here we go. We're going to try and get it over there. There we go. Going for a little celebration there as we go. Three, two, one. Happy Pandiversary. Hard to believe it's been 50 years. A pandemonium then? Two Chinese pandas offered to the United States. And it continues to this day. Adorable. <laughs> Kids, adults. Oh, he's so cute. All of us stop dead in our tracks when we see a panda, often sitting like a baby. I eat bamboo. Everyone knows that, Malia. <laughs> um, they're from China. <laughs> well, everyone probably knows that, too. We know that now, but 50 years ago, we didn't know much about pandas or even China. It's been so long. Take us back to that Cold War relationship. How frosty was it? Well, there were uh, 25 years of no communication. None. Between, no communication between uh, China and uh, and, and the United States. But the so-called bamboo curtain that separated our nations found an unexpected opening when President Richard Nixon and his wife visited China. On the table, the First Lady, Pat Nixon, saw a tin of cigarettes. So she points to the cylinder on which there is an image of a panda and says to Joe Enlai, gosh, aren't they cute? And he replies, I'll give you some. And just like that, panda diplomacy began. The zoo here has since hosted a total of eight pandas. So we had Ling Ling and Xing Xing, Tian Tian and Mei Shang, Tai Shan, Bao Bao, Bei Bei, and now Chao Chi Ji. Beyond the two million yearly visitors, every day more than 90,000 people click online to watch the 41 panda cams, capturing their human-like antics. And when it snows and this happens, it goes viral. 
Over the last five decades, advances in caring for these bears, including laser treatment for 24-year-old Tian Tian's arthritis. The honey water is a distraction to keep Tian Tian in one place. What is the laser doing? So it's emitting a light that basically, when I describe it to people, I call it sort of like jump-starting a car. 50 years ago, artificial insemination wasn't even considered, but it is now. Together, veterinarians in the U.S. and China have helped pandas once endangered to thrive. A newborn is about the size of a stick of butter. Pandas are one of those species that were, they were at risk of being lost. Um, and so they were on the edge. They've been brought back um, a lot quicker in some ways than we expected to a population now that there's hope for. Xiao Qi Ji conceived that way and born during the pandemic. His name, voted on by the public, translates to appropriately little miracle. This is a great way to come here and um, be distracted for a little while, I'm reminded again that there is still good in the world. Here. And kind of important, especially right now when you look at the conflicts. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. 50 years ago, there were fewer than 1,000 pandas in the wild. Today, with all the advances, more than 1,800 plus another 600 in zoos. Uh, three that we have here right now, look at that. Um, if you're wondering, when China gave us the pandas, what did we give them? Well, we gave them musk oxen. And yes, uh, they look like they smell. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, that wasn't a fair trade. We got the yeah, here. Terrible trade deal. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a tongue tongue. Uh, hey, I think we won all that deal, guys. Congratulations, Carrie, on that great toss. Yeah. Which panda is that behind you again? The one that, that's enjoying the uh, the breakfast? That is Mei Shang. Am I right? We yes. wouldn't know. He could tell us anything. Oh, Sashi Chi. So she did. So she did. Here we go. Thank you, Carrie. Know, um, Thank you, Carrie. I'm doing these stories about pandas, guy, because I just want to pander to you. Thank oh. you. Oh. That's Alice, Thank you for that part. There you go. Oh, Very good. God, that was pretty cool. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it, I know that it can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at five on NBC News Now. Ali Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Well, it is hard to believe it has been nearly 30 years since our next guest burst into the Hollywood scene. Back in the 90s, Scott will star as Bailey in the hit show Party of Five. These days, Scott is starring in a new Netflix film about a couple of underdogs. It's called Rescued by Ruby. It focuses on a Rhode Island state trooper who hopes to join an elite canine unit with a shelter dog as his partner. Scott plays the man in charge of the unit. I know how much you want this, how long you've waited. I'm a short guy. 
I barely made the height requirement. I had to work twice as hard to get to the same place as everyone else. I'm used to working 10 times harder. I like a guy who lists his shortcomings right off the bat. Scott <laughs> is here, and his wife Kelly joining us as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The cutest thing ever. They both just said, "I love you," right before. This, still not right like before this segment started. <laughs> <laughs> a last-minute reminder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so Scott, cute. you said you knew right away as soon as you saw this script that this was the movie you'd been waiting for. I did. I did, and not just because the character was uh, a short guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the movie has incredible heart. You yes. know, uh, I think we all love a dog movie. I think these days to have something that's gonna fill us with some joy and some positivity is always a great thing. But this was not your average dog movie. It's a true story based on this young Rhode Island State Trooper whose lifelong dream was to be a canine officer. He himself uh, struggles, you know, he has attention issues. Um, and he can't afford one of these expensive dogs that are usually trained for this work. So. It's this beautiful story of these two creatures who on their own are struggling to mm -hmm. find what's best in them and through meeting each other, they bring that best out. Mm -hmm. And they always say, you know, working with children and dogs, you don't do. That's right. How, how was it working with <laughs> I have to say dog? it was incredible. So this a dog named Bear uh, mm -hmm. was the dog they cast to play Ruby. Uh, had no experience in was front of Was it really a, a dog from a shelter or something yes, like that? Yes, I saw yes. that in the credits. I was like, wait, what? It's incredible. I mean, the whole movie but, uh, uh, on camera and behind the scenes is an incredible advertisement for rescuing animals. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, yes, this dog was saved and uh, and we're making a star so of him. Cute. For anybody watching, this is such a good movie. I was just telling them I watched it with my nine-year-old son last night and he was at the edge of his seat and it felt safe watching it there was, yeah. you know it was like it reminded me of like lassie back in the day mm -hmm. i mean it's just such a feel-good movie did you get an education too working with the dogs and a hundred percent yes i mean uh, you know one of the great things about being an actor is you get exposure to some of these worlds you wouldn't have otherwise so meeting real canine uh teams the humans and the partners mm -hmm. we shot on vancouver island and some of the people you'll see in the movie are actual canine That's cool. uh, teams oh. from from the local department they were technical support, but they also shared their wisdom and their knowledge and their love of the work mm -hmm. they do. So it's kind of a love letter to people yeah. that do this it's incredibly good. important search and rescue work. Mm -hmm. So it's Rhode Island. Uh, did you have to work really hard to get the accent there? We worked <laughs> on tricky. it. Yeah, it is tricky. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I had this little vocal exercise. There's this actor that I've always loved named Ron Eldard. So I would say Ron Eldard shops at Pottery Barn. Oh, okay. And he walks to the house saying this, by the way. It's <laughs> and hysterical. it becomes Ron Eldard shops at Pottery Barn. At pottery Barn. Ah. Yeah. It's funny you say this because <laughs> it, this is a movie about a dog, and my husband and I, he's from Boston. Yeah. I don't think that dog and log rhyme. Mm. He thinks dog and log rhyme. That's right. Oh, that's you're right. right. Dog. Yep. Dog. Yeah. Harry, yeah, yeah. Gary, that's another one, that. right? Like, oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and Grant Gustin, who people might know from The Flash and mm -hmm. an all around incredible guy and great actor, he and I would just kind of stay in the accent throughout the day, mm -hmm. and it made it easier to not. Pull in and out of it, but it was really, yeah, it was really. Yeah, cool. it's, it's it. tough to do. Yeah. Hey, um, Kelly, did you, did you, do you, do you know where the box of VHS tapes from Party of oh, Five I do. are in the house? I know. Have exactly you, where they you are. showed them to the kids? <laughs> or what, uh, what? We talk about this a lot. Like we're not sure what the age is to sort of dip back into that That's and show funny. them. You, you'd have to guide that. Train How old are they now, your kids? Our oldest is 12, so he's right there, yeah. right? There were some yeah. mature I think he could. subject yeah. matter. 12, well, yeah. you have nine and seven, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ooh, you're the, what you were saying about the movie being comfortable and safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel that way about Party 5, but I think it kind of dipped into some heavy oh, yeah. topics. Some heavier storylines, but if we watched so, along with them, mm -hmm. and yeah. so we could have conversations yeah, could about, about the it. more mature yeah. stuff. Well, before you leave us this morning, let's talk about, you have a book, a new book, it's called Flow. Yes, tell us about it for today. Yeah. So we were talking about how much worry everybody has right now. It's at an absolute fever pitch and mm -hmm. flow stands for finding love over worry mm. um, it's also wolf spelled backwards oh, oh, so that. That. Um, this, by the way story. flow came that. first and i saw that <laughs> second which was he held it up in the mirror and all of a sudden yeah, yeah but what you were saying al too i agree we have a better way we can do things with our mind as well mm -hmm. and all that stuff about menopause was kind of scary yes right. i think things like flow and what's in this book can sort of help us to challenge that and not drop into worry and not drop into fear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is really yeah. what, that's what we need. Do you have a quick tip um, for us? I say a lot, so it's it's all thought work. It's how mm -hmm. we're choosing to look at the world. Um, but in this case, it's probably not what you would think. We have to be moving our bodies. We have to have food in the morning, nourishing food. We need yeah. to take a time to just quiet our minds. Mm -hmm. And I really prioritize that. In the beginning okay. of the book, before I get into the 
harder stuff. The, it's not hard. It's not hard. <laughs> oh, it's quite oh, simple. Scott and Kelly, yeah. thank you so thank much. You guys. Thank what you guys. What a joy. So good. Uh, thank you. You're just pure light. <laughs> and don't thank forget, you. Rescued by Ruby is out on Netflix starting tomorrow. So good. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. From music to movies to maternity fashion, we got it all for you today. That's right. Justin Sylvester has the juicy scoop from Hollywood. Hey, yeah. Justin. Justin. You Girl, look so cute, I, Justin. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. You ladies look amazing, too. How are you this Can morning? Can you talk about Kelly Rowland for a minute? We got royalty in the house, Justin. Stop it. She's been to Can the I? Grammys, by the way. She performed <laughs> at the Grammys, by the way. Honey, Miss Motivation has been on that red carpet more than one time. Uh -huh. But did you hear about the Grammys this year? Talk to us. Tell us. Please. They are making the biggest mistake of their <laughs> lives. The Grammys is moving to Las Vegas. They're going to lose half their attendees to the strip. Now, Whoa. I am not a betting man here, mm -hmm. but if you guys want to make some cash, I'd bet on two things. One, everyone is going to be lit. And two, Doja Cat is definitely winning album of the year. Am I wrong? Is that oh, right? You wow. think Doja Cat's got it? Doja Cat has got it, but that will not be the only person winning that night because we're going to have some huge performances. Mm -hmm. Little Nas X with Jack Harlow, Billie Eilish, BTS, Olivia Rodrigo, Brandi Carlisle, and that is just the beginning, okay? Wow. Because you know the Grammys. They love a stunt. Yes. They love a moment. Yes. So you never know what you're going to get, but I do have one pitch to the Recording Academy. Can't you see this happening right here? Recording Academy. Oh. Can, can I get hold up with Destiny's Child? Yes. 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 yes! 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 Come on, Justin! <laughs> Justin, yes! I love Kelly, it! Can you not see Hoda singing Cater to You, First bringing all, up... Can, come on, can you I, see it? Yo, first of all, just the fact that we can see your legs in this dress is really come setting on. me up in the mood right Let's now. Let's go! <laughs> I'm all ready for it. I love Hoda, it. I already <laughs> called Tina. I already <laughs> called Tina. She's going to make okay. you that dress. We're good to go. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. All right. So what else is happening? A lot of folks are heading back All to right. the movie theaters, and Sandra Bullock's yeah. got some she got some words. Yeah. Girl, Sandra Bullock is back, and she is letting us all know, and she's making headlines right now for a few reasons. Mm -hmm. First, after starring in some of my favorite sequels, Speed and Miss Congeniality, she established, in her words, a no-sequel rule. Mm, but okay. recently, Sandra had a change of heart. She told Variety, I feel like in my old age, I'm learning to fight for things that I think will be best on screen, mm. and I don't care who comes away from them being angry. Now, I can also tell you what might have changed Sandra's mind, okay? But let me get my nail file for dramatic effect. Thank oh you so much, God. Gary. <laughs> okay, so you know Sandy is in this movie called The Lost City, mm -hmm. and she's in it with Channing Tatum. Well, she was on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. I know Colbert. where you're getting to. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And she described a very, very intimate scene with Channing Tatum mm -hmm. in which she came face to face with Channing's naked body. Take a look at this. Full on. <laughs> 
face to face with uh, the the landscape that I needed tete -tete, to. Tete-a-tete, as we say. You, in all honesty, when you're down there and you have two pages of dialogue, Got if it. you're looking directly at it, you'll get nothing done. So I looked. <laughs> I looked at his left, I looked at his left thigh, just grazed it here, and I focused more on the left inner thigh. Okay. Because you're a pro. I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think she's telling us that she would definitely do a sequel to The Lost City. Yeah, exactly. Oh, she'd have to she focused. would do a sequel. She would do a sequel, a, a threequel. Three <laughs> Honey, she would come back for a fourquel. I mean, who wouldn't? All right, okay. let's go. Well, let's go to fashion for a minute. Okay, Rihanna. People are obsessed uh, about the way she's dressing. You know why? Why? I'm, she. First of all, she's so lucky because yeah. I love the fact that Rihanna just doesn't care she doesn't. as far as like yes. fashion or anything con is concerned. She's like, I wouldn't say a, a, a rebellion, but yeah. she does it because there's like a, a freedom. Yes. Part, you know what I mean? So yeah. when yes. it comes to like her maternity fashion, I'm like, I, I can't front. I'm jealous. I'm jealous, yeah. Rhi. It looks like so much fun and she looks so beautiful. She's like, yeah. the belly is moving. Yeah. It wants some uh -huh. space, yes. and I'm going to give it space. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, for sure. But she wasn't the first celebrity to have this sexy maternity style. No, Kelly Jada Rowland, was. I saw you, honey. Oh. I saw you serving I'm sex sorry. appeal. Yes, but uh -huh. mine was covered, though, Justin. Mine was covered because I was so busy thinking, well, you know, I would be playing in my closet with a cute little <laughs> top on. I, I wasn't going to come out because of society. Well, you know and now mean? the world has changed. Uh, yeah. Yes. Justin, it's women like you guys that change the world yes. with your style, with your perspectives, with your openness. So I applaud you, Hoda. I applaud you, Kelly. I applaud Rihanna. Yes. You guys have moved women forward, and that's something that we should talk about oh. every Monday on that's the school. Right. 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 Justin, you are, you know, the best. You, and by the way, my favorite part still is you with the nail file for dramatic effects. <laughs> Sorry, that was the best thing you did today. You can catch Justin on the Daily Pop on our sister network, E. Come back tomorrow. We got another big morning on today. We will celebrate St. Patty's Day. We got food, we got music, we got a lot of fun. Don't forget to wear your green tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, until then, we'll see you. Bye bye. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, Again, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh, my gosh. I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. And unfortunately for today's culinary coach and my dear friend, Siri Daly, she's experienced my kitchen chaos up close a few too many times. The biggest step is slicing it. Oh boy, come on, oh my gosh. Well, I'm ready to put that behind me. Now, Siri's gonna teach me some kid-friendly favorites, including mac and cheese and chicken tenders with a few special ingredients. Plus, I'm gonna learn, finally, how to make a perfect grilled cheese. The real test will be to see if our kids love what we make, and they are a tough crowd. But I'm excited to give it a try, so let's get started. Hi, Siri. Well, hello. Thank you for having me. We meet again in the kitchen. I know. Although usually you're doing the cooking and I'm doing the staring. Not today. Or the my drinking. Friends, not today. Well, you know that my kids don't have the healthiest of eating habits. I really do want to learn some basic things so I could feed him a decent dinner, maybe sneak in some vegetables. We can do that. Our plan for today is, first, Savannah will learn how to make a perfect grilled cheese. Then we'll cook the noodles for the mac and cheese, make the cheese sauce, bread and bake the chicken tenders, prepare a special sauce, and serve. Every Saturday, okay. Charlie wants a grilled cheese for lunch. And I try to do it, but I end up, I put it on the griddle, I put butter, then I end up, the cheese doesn't melt, but the outside is burned. Right. I end up putting it in the microwave, it's a disaster. Okay. 
So here we go. We're going to start with our bread. Okay. I'm going to use some classic whole wheat, but we have sourdough here, Italian. I've even done it with English muffins, which is mm. kind of fun. I love that. And cinnamon raisin bread because I know Charlie has a hankering for that. You choose what you would like. I'm going to okay. go, like I said, with just the regular kind of whole wheat. I'm going to try whole wheat too. We have salted butter here, just one side of the bread. Okay, okay? we'll see, I this do both sides. This is the sides. side that's gonna go on the griddle, and okay. that will get it all nice and gooey and buttery and golden brown. You just basically wanna kinda smother it and make sure you get it all the way up to the edges so that not a single piece of bread is without. But now if I did wanna do your mayonnaise trick, I would do butter and then mayonnaise. Yeah, and, and oh. then maybe just do like a little less butter, a little okay. less mayonnaise so you're not you know, smothering it, but I have found it does tend to enhance the flavor a little bit, but hmm. okay. there's nothing wrong with salted butter. All and right. you always keep your butter out on the kitchen counter, which I, shocked me. I thought you had to keep it in the fridge. I keep salted butter out. Salted butter tends to last longer on the counter. My grandma did that, my mom did that. And then it's nice and soft, exactly. you're not like, you yep. know. Okay, I did mine. Okay. I beat you, did I do enough? Okay, now we're gonna use about two ounces of cheese, which is roughly like four slices. And this is a pretty gonna... thin slice, like yes. some of my so, white American that... cheese is thick. Right. So if it's thicker, then maybe two slices. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna try four here, and again, okay, now, 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 what? we're gonna what? turn oh, shoot. this over, because we wanna do it, that's Ew. that's the side that's gonna go on the griddle, right? Okay. Okay. So, eh, already, already screwed all right. up. It's all right, this is pretty like forgiving is recipe. Is it okay that it's like hanging over the edges? I get kind of obsessy about that. You wanna get them just kind of right up to the edges, but it's okay. okay if it hangs off a little, because honestly, that's the best part. I don't know if your kids make you cut off the crust, um, but my kids do, and then like, Pro mom tip, you just eat it. <laughs> exactly. So and that's your lunch. Yeah, and that's your lunch. Um, Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on the griddle carefully because it's hot. Wait, what did we put on this? Nothing? No. No, no because no, no oil, no, no cooking the, spray. The butter is, is is basically your cooking spray. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna not touch it for about two and a half minutes. You kinda wanna go slow and low, and then I'm gonna show you a little trick. After that, oh, by the way, we have some. Oh, what is this? Some, some spiked lemonade, if you if you would like oh. to cheers. Now we're to getting our closer to cheeses. our reality. Yeah, exactly. Mm. We'll, have, we'll have regular lemonade for the children. Yes, but, um, exactly. <laughs> okay, so this is going on. Yes, we don't want to move it because that will disrupt the cooking process, and we're really trying to get the bread nice and. That's funny because I, what I'd be doing is pressing this down. Press, press, yeah. press, press. Another thing, yeah. make sure you use a plastic spatula oh. because anything metal will scrape your griddle oh, or even okay. your nonstick pan. That's key. Okay. Then, let me show you our little trick. Okay, you have one over here. This is called a burger dome. Okay, so after we flip this, we're gonna cover it with our burger dome for another about two minutes. Okay. And that's gonna ensure that the cheese melts and gets oh. nice and ooey gooey and the bread still crisps. Could I put just like a glass lid of a half for a pot? Not glass, I would use again like a metal bowl or a pot, you could use a pot. Okay. It's whatever you use, if it doesn't have a handle like this, use pot holders to remove it. Why is everyone warning me all the time about the pans are hot? Well, you know, I know. Listen, I have <laughs> I, I have burn marks from all my times in the kitchen, so you're not alone. Okay. Um, I know, right, it's We're hot. gonna flip them now. See, I find that you hard. You need to use yeah. your fingers. Oh, is that to make okay? Sure. Yeah, that's Ooh, that looks look. good. Look how pretty. Oh, wow. perfect. But now the now cheese is not melted. It down a little bit. So that's why now we grab our burger domes. Mm -hmm. So our... right away goes the yep. burger dome. I'm going to get one of these. Right. That's it. I wonder where I've been going wrong. Maybe you're trying to do it too fast. I feel like a lot of people just want to crank up the heat. Yeah. And that will just burn your bread and your cheese won't melt enough. What if like, I wanted to add like turkey or ham yes. or something oh, like is, that? A, this is just like your basic grilled cheese. Now you could add tomatoes, bacon, ham, turkey, anything. When would um, I add it in this process? In the beginning, right? right oh, yeah. okay. When you put on the cheese, you would add whatever else you want. All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, look at, oh, look at the wow. meltiness on the side. Yours is meltier than mine, but it looks well, good. Sometimes it depends on the cheeses. Mm -hmm. I think that looks great. Okay. All right. Ooh, I mean, this truly yeah, does look, look great. Just mm -hmm. slice it. You know what my mom used to make? Do you do triangles or rectangles? I like triangles, rectangles, rectangles, or strips. Um, my mom used to do fried bologna a lot. Ooh. I know, it's very 70s. Mmm, mm. it's just good mm -hmm. though. So good. Oh my mm. gosh. I'm a culinary genius now. We did it. Grilled cheese. cheese. All right. I needed to know this. On to the next. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're going to make a baked mac and cheese with a special ingredient. There's going to be cauliflower blended into the sauce. I'm telling you, your kids will not know. Okay. Sneaking in vegetables. Yep. Is the not name above of the it. Game. Not above it. So we have boiling water over here. Yeah. We want to always season our oh, water yes. before. So you can generously season All right, with I'm the salt. I'm trying to get better at being generous. Okay. Because you're um, a very generous person. Yes, but not with salt. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I mean, like I would normally have thought that's enough. More. Should we taste it? So the reason you want to salt it so generously, especially in this case, is the pasta's only cooking for six minutes, so it's not going to have a lot of time to absorb that. I think that. I need more. Let's, let's do more. I mean, you can... It should taste real salty. Yeah. Instead of using your finger, yeah. just like pour some in. Oh, that just seems so excessive. Oh, I can't. Okay. How about right. that? Okay. Good, All good, right. good. Okay, pour in. This is a pound of elbow mac. A pound of elbow mac. So just take that wooden spoon and give it a stir a couple mm -hmm. times just to break up the pasta. You don't want it to stick together. Do I keep the heat on high? Uh-huh. Okay. You should be good. Okay. Now, for a nice little shortcut, mm -hmm. I have this cauliflower that you can steam in the microwave. That is cheating. It's not cheating. We are busy mothers. There is nothing wrong with it. <laughs> We're microwaving? We're microwaving it. Put it this side down so that the... Angel! Microwave. Just do five. And that'll give us a good uh, timing on the pasta. I mean, if you want, you can always cut up your florets and steam it. Like, I've done that, obviously, but... You know what? I on know, a busy night? I know my way around a microwave. This is Monterey Jack, which mm -hmm. I'm going to take. That is cheddar. Okay. Eight ounces each. Okay. We are going to... I use the, yeah, the I big like side. I like the big side. Yep. I'm good on the grating until we get to the very end. Right. That's when you kind of just want to, you know, scoot your hands back as much as you can. I'm not going to lie. My tricep hurts. I know. So then I, you don't have to go to the gym either. Oh, geez, this I, is like... Your fingers are getting awfully close. Just keep going with this. Put it down. Are you scaring you? <laughs> yes. Scaring you a little bit? I'm scaring myself. Okay. See, like when I get to the very end, honestly, yeah. this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to break it up because, again, okay. like little pieces mm -hmm. will not. Oh, see? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why people are nervous. <laughs> Does the recipe call for blood? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think my arm's going to be sore tomorrow. Yeah. All right, well, now, what there, we're going to do okay, is yeah. we're going to reserve three-fourths cup of the cheese. Can it live together? Yep. Okay. Okay, we're going to put our cheese on this same sheet okay. pan to just make some room. Mine can come over yes. here. Okay. Oh, there's our cauliflower. So the cauliflower's I'm going to let it sit for just a second because it's okay. hot, and why don't we drain the pasta? Okay. All right. Let me guess. Hot okay. pot? Ooh, it's heavy one, too. I know. So right into the okay. drainer. Just pour it all in. Yeah. Right? And then put some cold water. Rinse the pasta because that's going to stop the cooking process. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cold so water. So just cold water. It'll just stop the it? cooking. Yep. Okay. It's not going to get too soggy? No. And then you can kind of just shake it, let it drain in the sink, and that's it. We'll leave it there while we make our sauce. So do you want to go grab the cauliflower from yes. the microwave? Ooh, I better just, bring it in case it's hot. Yeah, just Hold on to like the edges of the bag. Okay. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> Look, it says pick up here. Yeah, well, that's helpful. So convenient. That's friendly. Okay, now we are going to cut that open and we're gonna pour it right into the blender. So All right, that. so now we're going to add one and a half cup of milk. One we have whole milk here. You can okay. use 2%, but I wouldn't go any lower than that just because it's gonna add yeah. flavor. And it's helpful if the 
milk is at room temperature. If oh. it's not, you can always like microwave it for like 15 to 20 seconds. It'll just help when you make your roux that everything's kind of consistent. I fear kitchen machinery. Anything with blades is a little scary. Yeah. Does that seem good? That seems good. Okay, then what? Okay, so on. on. And then what? And we'll probably hit the puree button if your okay. blender has that. There you go. Wow. And we're gonna let it go just for a little bit. I always feel I have to hold it. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think we can stop it and just, we wanna blend it until it's really, really smooth and silky and creamy, because any chunks might, you know, sound off the <laughs> children alarm. Alert, vegetable, <laughs> alert, vegetable. Okay, Ooh, that How looks look? milky. That looks very I good, yeah. I think it does. Why don't you grab that butter, All right. and we're just gonna butter our casserole dish. Just How am I over doing here. It? Okay. We're gonna, I mean, you can like use I would your just hands, go, like, take but the stick I just like and to stick it around. Yeah, you could do that. Or I, or you could just kind of like scoop it up with this and just get the sides. Your way seems what? classier. <laughs> I just don't like mess. I'm just you I know, don't so OCD. You really there are. You Is that good? Okay. Yeah. That a little doesn't more. seem you like can a do much. More. Yeah. yeah, like I like to yeah, get Yeah, I would in get there. a good goop. I usually just take the stick. Perfect. Am I getting the sides too? Yeah, there's nothing too? wrong with taking the stick. Yeah, sides okay. and, and bottom. This is where my type A personality yeah, really comes yeah. in. I'm like, I don't want, I want every side done just yep. right. I don't want to mess it up, you know? I want to get an Perfect. A. I want to get an A. A plus on buttering the casserole dish. Okay. okay. That's over. Now we're going to measure out one more cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Got it. Three tablespoons of flour. You can measure out and put in that little bowl. Okay. This is mise, be or mise en place. Absolutely, wow. Or mise en place. <laughs> then we are going to start our roux. Um, I'll put the cheese over here just for okay. later. Um, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get four tablespoons of butter, mm -hmm. and you can kind of okay. eyeball that. I, you know. Well, I can't, but I know a, that one stick It's about is a half, half of a the stick. stick. Yeah. So it's like that. Perfect, and okay. just throw that right in the pot. I enjoy this part. Yeah. I just like to see how the butter skates around. It, you know? Right, it's really pretty. Seems like and it's having it a good time. it smells good. Yeah. This is what cooking should be. <laughs> you can add the flour. We have to whisk constantly. That's why we love to have everything ready because this is kind of something you have to babysit. Yes. You don't really want to walk away at this point. Okay. Just make sure that you try to mm -hmm. avoid the clumps. Okay. Crop and then add when the... we add the milk, we're also going to do it sort of slowly. We don't okay. want to add it all at once. I like to dump it in, so don't Because do that. we want to activate the flour, and the starch. Does that look frothy we, to you? It's looking good, yeah. See how it's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. I like to, I, this is awesome. I'm so impatient. I just, I'm like, let's get in there. Perfect. Now you can add some more. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is coming together. Yeah. And then next, we're gonna add our milky okay. but cauliflower I, mixture. But don't I wanna get this a little smoother mm -hmm. first? That's good. Woo! <laughs> God, this is worse. Not since my Jane Fonda aerobics routine have I worked out this hard. Yeah, but you probably did that this morning. Right? I know, I'm like, yeah. ugh. Yeah. Add the cauliflower puree and stir to combine. Is this as little at a time Switch. thing? Like no, this, or can I just dump it Since you've already on? added, the, yeah, you're good to go now. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And Wait, it's gonna this start is, to thicken. This is so right? sneaky. You would so never sneaky. know this is cauliflower. Yep. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Bring to a simmer. Now is this a simmer? Yeah, because see of... the bubbles starting to yeah. form. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Whisking constantly, cook for one to two minutes until thickens. Do you think that's thick enough? It's getting there. Another like way to tell is if like, once you kind of lift it, you wanna just see some of it, some of the remains on the spoon. I mean, this whole constant stirring. Yeah. It's like it a is, baby, you always have to be watching five it. five minutes of, of like, Babysitting. Yeah. All it right. It seems cooked. Yeah. So now let's add our cheese. Okay. All right. I'm just going to dump it in. Okay. Yep. And then just continue to stir. I want to have a big splash. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to get my stirrer out. Yeah. Goodbye, whisk. Goodbye, whisk. You've done a good job, but we're moving on. Okay. Mm, this is my favorite part. Too. Yeah. This it looks pretty so yummy. Cheesy. Season with salt oh, to taste, but I'm not there ready for that. Here's yet. where we grab the nice. magic, magic spoon, spoon box. box. Do you want to taste it or are you trusting me? I'm going to trust you. I trust your palate. I think it needs a little salt. Some salt. Go for it. Okay. Well, not a lot though. Okay. That's pretty tasty. There you go. More? I mean, there's salt in the cheese naturally, and so, you know, that's good. I mean, okay. I don't know. The salting thing is very um, perplexing to me. Now, I'm going to grab. Like, I don't want to over salt. The but pasta. I, don't I know. That's why you can always, you know, you can. Now what happens? Put some on. Now I'm going to break this pasta up just a little bit so mm -hmm. that. It doesn't clump together. Oh, you add the add. pasta yes. to here, but uh -huh. it says remove from the heat, so I think I need to okay, turn it off. Okay, you want to turn it off? Yep. Okay. 
And then it's off. I kind of declumped the pasta so oh, okay. we don't splatter ourselves. I mean, this is starting to look Stir real that good. Up. We're gonna I would eat it just like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's going to get so nice and baked and crispy on the top and mm. because we're going to add that cheese that we reserved. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically trying to coat as much now. This is just about yep. stirring and coating. And then we can just pour it in because we can also kind of stir it up in here. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to transfer it. Are you ready? Yep. Did you feel good ready. about that decision? Ready. Oh, I didn't taste I it again, but I'm just going to trust. Well, you transferred. Okay. I kind of like this. I'm not doing any work. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Trying to explain this to me is work. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got ready? it? Yeah. Yep. Yum. Ah, it looks so good. Okay. Now Yum. just sprinkle the top with this remaining mixture oh, with of the cheese. remaining cheese. Just okay. I'm going to just eat some. Yeah. While you do that. I love that. And this cheese will get kind of brown probably, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to bake it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes mm -hmm. until it cooks all the way through, gets nice and hot and gooey. The sauce will thicken some more in the oven. Great. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to just stop it right here, cover it, and then bake it at a later yes. day, could I do, do that? that? You could absolutely do that. Okay. Put it in the fridge, even in the freezer if you wanted to, but in the fridge, just make sure you, know, you kind of let it sit at room temperature for a little bit before you put it in the oven, and it's good to go. Should I put it in? Yeah. Top oven. Okay. I'm so proud. Me too. <laughs> Remember that time? <laughs> okay. Good job. All right. High five. Yay! In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. So the mac and cheese is in the oven. Mm. Now we are going to make some Parmesan crusted chicken fingers, Yum. chicken tenders. My kids live on chicken fingers. Right? And so first we're going to set up a dredging station. So first, why don't you grab the flour mm -hmm. and we're going to add 3 fourths cup to this pie pan. Mm -hmm. And I like to use pie pans mm -hmm. because it's just the perfect shallow dish yeah. with, you know, the ridged That's sides. a good idea. Yeah. Now we're going to use three egg whites. Have you ever separated I have. I okay. think I do know how to do it. Three do egg whites. Do you want me to do one with you? Or well, you let wanna... me try okay, and you great. can grade me. And then, yeah, you can put the... Um, egg white. Egg white there. will go in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well... Egg yolk. There it goes. Oh, shoot. Okay. You got any extra eggs? <laughs> Just... And it's I know. okay. So it's this not isn't pretty. Like, this it's isn't... not pretty, but I can do it. Yeah. That's perfect. But I'm going to give you a little tip. Instead of cracking the egg on a side, crack it on the countertop. Oh, really? It'll, it'll give you a more even shell. Sometimes when you crack it, there you go. Oh. When you crack it on the... Oh, my gosh, that's shoot, so much right? better. There you go. Wow, game change. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so now the panko, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're going to use about a Is cup of panko. Yep, that's okay. the panko. You can use breadcrumbs, too. I just like panko because I feel What's like the it gets, gets a little crispier. This is a Japanese breadcrumb. Oh, okay. Um, breadcrumbs 
tend to just be more fine. One cut. And okay. I like the crisp that Panko offers. Okay, good yeah, to know. So I, I actually always wondered what the heck yeah. the difference was. Okay. One and cup just of sprinkling that. it around. Okay. And then a third cup of Parmesan. Okay. Right there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that whisk to kind of perfect. Okay. And just kind of combine that. So now our dredging station mm -hmm. is all set. Okay. Um, chicken. We have five or yeah, five chicken tenders here, which you can find at the store. Mm -hmm. If you don't find chicken tenders, you can always buy breasts and kind of just cut them into strips. Okay. So now, what am I doing? Just laying just it on the pan. Just lay it on here because it's just gonna be a vessel for us to season the chicken. So I'm not. This isn't the pan I'm gonna no. cook it. No. Okay. So I don't need to grease nope. it or whatever. Okay. Right. So it could be a plate. Could be anything. Yeah. And then um, season generously, the word of the day. <laughs> Both sides? Both sides. So you can okay. use those tongs to flip it over. Because this is really the only point other than like the Parmesan mm -hmm. that we're seasoning. That That's great. That looks great. I'm getting Perfect. more yes. like liberal yes, with I like my it. Okay. That's salt. Good? Awesome. Yep. And then turn it. Okay. Perfect. And I guess you could okay. do pepper if your kids liked it, but it's always a little yeah. it's questionable. Exactly. What they do. Is that good? That's great. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Okay. Now we are going to spray our sheet over there with some baking spray. Okay. Because then we're going to put it right on to our Are we baking these? Dish. Yes, we're going to bake that. Oh, we're not frying? We're not frying. Oh, that's I mean, healthier, you, right? You know, yeah. Okay. So first we're going to coat in the flour. You can just do one at a time. So I'm just dropping mm -hmm. it? How much? Just make sure just it gets a little bit? coated on both sides. Like that's good? Yeah, that's okay. great. What about the sides? And no? then, okay, then to the egg whites. And I'm just coating both sides uh -huh. too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You can kind of like let some of that drip off because mm -hmm. sometimes it can get a little goopy. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then into the panko. Okay. Get that nice and coated. Yeah, this is the good stuff, yes. right? And you can, can yeah, perfect. Okay. That's good? Yeah. Okay. And just set it there. Set it down. And okay. Then and then here we go. Repeat. Ooh, it's the last one. There we go. This lucky guy is going to get all this good stuff. Okay. All right. Into the bottom oven. All right. 425 convection oven. How long? 450. 450, like I said. <laughs> About 10 minutes. What do you see right now with Putin? And do you think he's a rational actor? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? The sanctions did not deter. Can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I can smell the chicken. It's almost done. Yep. We're going to make a really quick special sauce. You can call it Savannah's special sauce. <laughs> so this is a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. We're going to add um, a fourth cup of ketchup. Okay. Any old ketchup? Yep. And oh. you can like, you know, taste this if you like less ketchup, if you like mm -hmm. more, if you don't want ketchup. It's just kind of a fun. It's, it, it just looks like the sauces you get at like fast food restaurants. Through. Oh, this is uh, a, a tablespoon? tablespoon of mustard. You can use yellow. Dijon. I feel like the Dijon can be kind of spicy for kids, so yeah. I stick with yellow. Kids like sauce. They like to dip. Yes. And just mix Dipping it up. Dipping is key. Yep. With the whisk or this little spatula? You can or? use that. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Until it kind of gets that like pinky special. Oh my gosh. It is the stuff that's yeah. on your fast uh -huh. food burger. Savannah's um, secret Savannah sauce. Savannah's secret sauce. <laughs> okay. So why don't you spoon that mm -hmm, into, mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Okay. And then, perfect. Okay. 
right now, why don't you go check on the mac and cheese? Okay. Because it's probably done. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do sometimes at the very end yeah. is just broil it. It's done. Okay. Well, let's let's let me see. Let's just broil it for like okay. a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Because it'll just get nice and caramelized on the top. You just have to How make long? sure you watch your broiler because every oven's different. It could be like 30 seconds or it could be two minutes. What am so, I looking for? Just to get that kind of brown caramelization. But okay. while, while, why don't you grab the chicken because I think that that's done. Here, okay. Janita. Oh, you got it. When you tell me to watch the oven, I am ready to do it. <laughs> I'm ready to stare Stand obsessively. This there. looks good. Perfect. I can't believe we made this. You made this, Savannah. Correction. It looks yummy. Right, here, put it right oh, here, okay. and then you can just take the tongs and okay. throw them on there, and then we'll check on our mac and cheese. It should be done. Ooh, nice and crispy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And they look really good. They actually do. Okay, now we can grab the mac and cheese. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Does okay. it look good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, it got that little golden top. Perfect. Yeah, just gets it nice and. I love the crusty edges. A little broil. Okay. All right, you grab no, that. I still haven't learned this technique. I will well. grab that. That was pretty good. Okay. I'll grab this, and we can eat. Yum. Okay, we Yum. did this. We did it. Let's eat like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this actually looks very good to me. I'm excited. Okay. So be careful. Can That's I serve, hot. Serve you up some. Yes, please. Look at how. Oh, it's good, and look at that. It sounds all nice and mm -hmm. crusty. I'm gonna see if I can taste the okay. cauliflower. Yep, that's the real test. Well, the real test will will come. Will come. Let's see. Okay. I'm just gonna use my hands to take some chicken. Put some mm -hmm. Siri Savannah special sauce. Yep. Now this is all yours. Now you get to take credit for that sauce. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Bon appetit. Cheers. Bon appetit. Cheers. Okay. Here's the test. All right. I'm going for the cauliflower. Me too. First. I just want to see. So hot. Hot and delicious. It's really good. It's so good. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Not one bit. Mm -mm. I'm just okay. going to get into this chicken. Should I dip Even it the way my kids would? No, yeah. Let's go classic. Whatever. You're right. You're right. All right. Mmm. It's good. So good. There is it no right. It tastes good. There's no right and mm. wrong when it comes to kid food. <laughs> you are actually a delicious chef. So thank you for doing this silly kid food with me. But this is what I actually need to know. Mm -hmm. It's not silly. We have picky eaters combined. Yes. And so this is what we have to do. I mean, we have to have fun, interesting meals for them. It's good, and now I don't have to feel so guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a triumph. There's only one thing to do now. You know what we have to do. Put it to the test. Put it to the test with the kids. All right. An excuse we'll... to get together. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Good luck. <laughs> to you too. <laughs>Good morning. Breaking news. Urgent plea with his nation under siege. Ukraine's president addresses the U.S. Congress this morning. A speech called one of the most important by a foreign leader since World War II. The destiny of our country is being decided. While overnight Russia steps up its attacks, accused of taking hundreds 